Afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We're about to start the closing session. Could you please um, take your seats? Thank you very much. We'll just wait 30 more seconds. Thank you very much. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the closing session of the IGF 2018 annual meeting. On this podium to my right, we have Ms. Lynn Santamore, Chair of the IGF 2018 Multi-Stakeholder Advisory Group. And to her right, we have Mr. Fabricio Hoschild, Assistant Secretary General for Strategic Coordination in the Executive Office of the United Nations Secretary General. On his right, we have Ambassador David Martino, host country co-chair of the IGF 2018 Multi-Stakeholder Advisory Group. And right at the end there, we have Mr. Pierre Bonis, co-chair of the French Multi-Stakeholder Organizing Committee. Thank you. Uh, this session will be divided into three parts. We will first have brief introductory remarks by the chairs and the host country. And then we will have our traditional open mic session. Uh, you can see the microphones right there. Uh, you can just line up there and we'll take you alternately um, the rows. And then after that, we'll have the final closing reflections from the community hosts and the United Nations Secretary General's representative. Uh, without further ado, I'll pass the floor on to Lynn St. Tamor. Thank you. Thank you, Changatai. I'd like to take just a moment to thank the IGF community, those participating both online and on site, for all the efforts here this week and over the last year. Not only for the thoughtful, excellent sessions of this annual meeting, but for all the work in the intersessional activities, supporting four best practice forums, 17 dynamic coalitions, the major intersessional policy effort, connecting and enabling the next billions, which is in its fourth year, and of course, for all the efforts of the 111 national, regional, and youth IGF initiatives. Those activities enrich and inform all our work across the IGF ecosystem and are so very important. There'll be many more thanks later, um, but our work here is not done yet. After some remarks by the host country, as Chengatai said, we will turn to the community for the open mic session, where we look forward to your reflections on this year's IGF and of course, on your thoughts for the work and the year ahead. We have nearly an hour and a half scheduled for that session, so please do get your thoughts and comments ready. We have many vehicles for providing feedback, and of course the feedback is really essential to our ongoing improvements. Specifically, I'd like to remind everyone to take a few minutes and respond to the question, what impact can the IGF or the IGF ecosystem have over the next year on the topics we discussed here this week. Um, we were looking for feedback specific to each session, but feedback by tags or main topics um, is also very helpful. Again, the more concrete the suggestion, the better. And please, again, if you can, do be specific about the workshop or, or the topic. You can actually find many links um, from the home page, which say something like feedback here or feedback form here. Um, before welcoming Ambassador Martino to say a few words, I'd like to take just a moment to thank UNESCO for all this support to this year's IGF. UNESCO is one of our partners in this World Summit on the Information, or WISIS, journey, and we appreciate their active engagement. I would also like to acknowledge that ITU Secretary General Hulin Zhao was very sorry that he could not be here due to the overlapping dates with the ITU plenipotentiary. ITU is, of course, another important WISIS partner and we look forward to catching up with them soon. So now to introduce, amb introduce Ambassador David Martino, the Ambassador for Digital Affairs in the Ministry for Europe and Foreign Affairs, France. He is, of course, the co-host for this year's IGF. As many of you know, the French government and David personally stepped in to ensure there was a host for this year's IGF 
when we found ourselves without a host at a very late date. This, of course, followed a similar situation the year before when the government of Switzerland and the UN offices in Geneva similarly stepped in to help. We're very grateful for Switzerland and for France's support to the IGF and for such a clear demonstration of your support to multi-stakeholder processes. We look forward to Berlin next year. This offer to host has been with the UN for several years, and we are also very grateful to them for their support. Of course, this means that we will be in the European region for three years consecutively, not by design, but by necessity, and through the exceptional efforts of a few governments. We value diversity in all things in the IGF and in the internet governance community, and certainly in venues. It's key to broadening engagement with other stakeholders. And so I'm asking governments in other regions to please consider hosting an IGF in the future. Um, Changatai and I are both here at your disposal for any additional information. But seriously, if we really want diversity in our venues and we want to broaden our engagement, we need um, more support, more offers to host IGF from other parts of the world. With that, Ambassador Martino, thank you, and the floor is yours. Merci, Lynn. Euh, je, je vais, pour ma part, d'abord commencer par euh, respectueusement et amicalement laisser la parole à mon co-chair du comité d'organisation, co-chair représentant la société civile, qui est à ma droite, Pierre Bonis, mais pas avant, Pierre, d'avoir remercié en notre nom à tous les deux Lynn Saint-Amour pour euh, sa constance, sa ténacité, son expérience, sa passion pour euh, l'ensemble de nos sujets et, et son attachement à l'IGF qui l'a fait se lever le matin, tous les matins, pour que l'IGF vive, pour qu'il soit accueilli dans d'autres pays hôtes et, et globalement pour faire tourner cette, cette machine. Donc euh, Lynn Saint-Amour, euh, il était temps qu'avec un tel nom, vous soyez accueillis dignement par la France, euh, puisque pour ceux qui ne le savent pas, le Saint-Amour est un des meilleurs vins du Beaujolais, il fallait le dire, euh, et, et c'est quand même un des plus beaux noms de vins qui soit, un des plus beaux noms tout court, le Saint-Amour. Donc Lynn, merci pour tout ça, merci à ton équipe, Changetai et toute l'équipe du, du secrétariat de l'IGF, et maintenant Pierre, c'est à toi. Merci beaucoup, David. Merci, mesdames et messieurs. Euh, nous approchons de la conclusion de ce 13e forum sur la gouvernance de l'Internet, mais nous n'y sommes pas encore tout à fait. Les, les connaisseurs savent combien la session qui va s'ouvrir dans quelques minutes, euh, dite de stock taking, est riche et permet de faire un point sur les avancées, les approfondissements, les solutions trouvées ou non par l'ensemble des parties prenantes durant ces trois jours de travail intense. Alors à nos yeux, David et moi, et je pense au nom de tout le comité d'organisation, cette édition euh, à Paris du Forum sur la gouvernance de l'Internet euh, pourrait marquer l'histoire du Forum sur la gouvernance de l'Internet, et ce pour plusieurs raisons. D'abord, une participation très importante autour des 3000 participants et très diverse. Ensuite, une expression au plus haut niveau de la part du système des Nations Unies et du pays hôte, ce qui représente une conjonction, je crois, inédite dans l'histoire du Forum sur la gouvernance de l'Internet. Enfin, une actualité qui amène l'ensemble des parties prenantes à travailler plus ardemment encore à la recherche de solutions consensuelles pour faire face aux nouveaux défis qui sont tous les jours plus nombreux euh, et qui peuvent être difficiles euh, à régler, et dans le même temps saisir toutes les opportunités offertes par la société de l'information. Alors, Personnellement, pour moi, c'est une grande fierté d'avoir participé à l'organisation de ce forum à côté de l'UNESCO. Euh, nos amis de l'UNESCO, je voudrais particulièrement saluer Sacha Rubel et Judith Van Zalen parce qu'elles ont travaillé très dur et parfois dans des conditions un peu difficiles pour vous accueillir tous ici. Difficile à cause de nous. En fait. Oui, je n'osais pas le dire, mais enfin, oui, c'est surtout à cause de moi d'ailleurs. Mais donc, je m'excuse platement auprès de, de tout le personnel de l'UNESCO que parfois j'ai un peu bousculé, mais, 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 mais véritablement, c'était un plaisir pour moi en tout cas de travailler avec vous. Euh, 
Alors, vous savez, on est convaincu en France quand même de l'approche multipartie prenante et on est notamment convaincu qu'elle peut être efficace, au-delà d'être juste et équitable. Et c'est pour ça qu'on a mis en place un comité d'organisation multipartie prenante. On fait de la logistique multipartie prenante. Il faut qu'on soit efficace, il faut que ça marche. Et j'espère qu'on vous a montré que ça pouvait marcher. Alors pour nous deux, David et moi, le moment est venu de remercier euh, les personnes et les organisations qui se sont impliquées, souvent bénévolement, ne comptons ni leurs jours, ni leurs heures, ni leur énergie, pour vous permettre à toutes et tous d'être ici et de trouver ensemble euh, des solutions pour l'Internet de demain. Et donc, on, on, je vais commencer par remercier nos, nos camarades, nos amis et nos partenaires de la société civile française. Et en premier lieu, l'équipe du chapitre français de l'Internet, l'ISOC France, avec Nicolas Chagny. Merci à toi. Avec euh, Lucien Castex. Merci à toi. Nous avions créé, il y a quelques années, euh, quatre ans maintenant, je crois, le chapitre français de l'Internet, tu le fais vivre ou le fait vivre, merci pour tout ça. Euh, Renaissance numérique, un think tank français avec euh, Jennifer, euh, Jennifer Chrétien au premier rang, deuxième rang. Merci à toi Jennifer de ton travail, de tous les instants. Nous te devons beaucoup. David Lacomblède qui dirige la Villa Numéris, merci à toi. Je ne te vois pas alors que tu fais trois mètres de haut. Mais je te sais dans la salle, David, merci pour ton aide, pour ton concours, extrêmement précieux. Je voudrais évidemment remercier le directeur général de l'AFNIC, qui gère le point FR, et toute son équipe, donc le directeur général est là, merci Pierre, merci à ton équipe. Sophie Canac, Pascal Vella, toute l'équipe de communication, Régis Massé, Benoît Ampeau, euh, toute l'équipe commerciale également, merci vraiment euh, non seulement d'avoir euh, participé personnellement et franchement sans toi on n'y serait pas et, et d'avoir euh, accepté de mettre à disposition aussi les compétences et le temps et l'énergie de ton équipe c'était évidemment absolument crucial il y, a, il y a une autre personne que je voudrais citer euh, Laurent Ferrali si on n'entend rien, c'est parce qu'il est corse, donc il a fait taire tout le monde. <rire> Laurent Ferrali de l'ICAN, qui nous a apporté son soutien personnel et, et, et au fond le soutien de l'ICAN. Sébastien Bachelet, ancien membre du board de l'ICAN et activiste, merci Sébastien, activiste de la première heure. Nous te devons beaucoup également. Je voudrais remercier euh, Monji Marzoug euh, pour euh, Orange qui nous a beaucoup aidé euh, intellectuellement et de, de plein d'autres manières. Merci à toi. Merci à Stéphane Richard d'avoir participé au panel de haut niveau. Merci à toi. Et puis, je voudrais remercier euh, Jean-Pierre Ferrand de l'agence Allegria, l'agence d'événementiel, qui nous a permis, qui nous a énormément aidé et qui nous a permis de vous recevoir dans d'aussi bonnes conditions. Euh, Pierre, à toi pour la suite. Voilà, il me reste, moi, euh, au don euh, du comité d'organisation de, de, de la composante société civile et secteur technique, euh, à remercier le gouvernement. Euh, oui, L'échange de bons procédés entre acteurs, ça ne fait jamais de mal. Euh, et notamment, euh, je voudrais commencer par remercier très chaleureusement, évidemment, Dalila Ramouni, qui travaille formidablement depuis des mois là-dessus. Euh, et autour d'elle, Najma Bichara, Médémocrite. Je voudrais aussi remercier Laurent Stefanini et la délégation permanente française à l'UNESCO, euh, qui a beaucoup facilité les choses euh, pour nous. Euh, et puis, euh, donc cette équipe de choc, elle est vraiment au cœur de l'organisation. Il y avait dans le comité de coordination également des organismes qui relèvent de la sphère publique, même si ce n'est pas des organismes gouvernementaux, et qui ont joué un rôle absolument majeur. Je voudrais remercier pour le Conseil national du numérique, Charles-Pierre Astolfi, son secrétaire général, pour tout ce qu'il a fait. Vous pouvez le remercier pour les sacs, hein, d'ailleurs, ils sont très beaux. Marie-Lou Leroy, évidemment. Euh, 
Je voudrais remercier pour l'ARCEP Antoine Samba. Je ne sais pas s'il est là, mais merci aussi pour leur, pour leur aide. Voilà pour, pour toutes ces personnes qui, vraiment, je crois, pour certaines d'entre elles, ont découvert le FGI. Pour d'autres, ce n'était pas la première édition, mais ont pris beaucoup de plaisir à faire en sorte que vous soyez accueillis dans les meilleures conditions. Merci pour eux. Merci vraiment à tous ceux qui ont été cités et à tous ceux que, par mégarde, nous n'aurions pas forcément cités. Euh, je voudrais aussi, en, en notre nom à tous, remercier tous les volontaires qui ont fait un boulot énorme depuis euh, quatre jours, à qui nous devons beaucoup. J'espère que vous vous êtes amusés, que vous avez pris du plaisir, que vous avez appris des choses. Euh, parce que de notre côté, ça a été absolument crucial de pouvoir nous appuyer sur vous. Vous avez fait des tas de choses, vous avez fait un travail logistique, vous avez fait un travail de, de prise de notes, de synthèse, d'animation. Vous avez été remarquable en tout point. Vous avez été très nombreux, tellement nombreux qu'on on ne va pas s'aventurer à citer toutes les écoles et toutes les universités que vous représentez, parce qu'on risquerait d'en oublier. Mais en tout cas, merci à vous tous. Et sachez que vous avez votre place dans l'écosystème de l'IGF et de l'IGF français notamment. Merci à vous. Et puisqu'en tant que pays hôte, on a encore un petit peu de temps pour nous, euh, je voudrais euh, donner la parole à deux personnalités de l'écosystème numérique français, parce qu'ils le méritent, euh, deux leaders, deux entrepreneurs, qui, au fond, si nous avons bien participé au débat depuis trois jours, incarnent des idées, des solutions et des valeurs que nous avons tous, je crois, tenté de, 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 de mettre en avant au cours de nos débats. Euh, je voudrais inviter euh, Alexandre Zapolsky, qui est le fondateur de l'Inagora, et qui est en même temps un membre du Conseil national du numérique, et qui est euh, de longue date un promoteur du logiciel libre en France et en Europe. Et après lui, j'inviterai Eric Léandry, le fondateur de Quant, pour des raisons tout à fait similaires. Alexandre, tu as la parole. Monsieur l'ambassadeur, mon cher David, mesdames et messieurs, c'est un véritable honneur pour moi et au nom de ma société de participer à la clôture de cette IGF 2018. Je tiens à remercier l'ambassadeur Martinon, Également le président de l'AFNIC, Pierre Bonis, de bien avoir voulu nous associer à cet événement aux côtés de nos amis de Quant. Nous partageons les mêmes valeurs que l'ensemble des participants de l'IGF. Nous croyons aux vertus d'un inter Internet libre et ouvert qui est pour nous la garantie sine qua non d'un Internet neutre. Cette neutralité du net Certains l'attaquent au profit de géants économiques de l'Internet. Nous ne voulons pas qu'Internet se résume, comme la quadrature les appelle, à un GAFA Minitel, une sorte de réseau où seuls seraient proposés des services numériques commerciaux. Nous pensons que tout ne s'achète pas, tout ne se vend pas. Internet ne doit pas devenir uniquement un lieu de marchandisation de son temps ou de ses données. Ce n'est pas notre modèle de société, ce n'est pas notre culture. De la, même façon, nous pensons, de la même façon, nous ne pensons pas qu'un État seul, aussi puissant puisse-t-il être, que cet État soit seul le garant de l'émancipation de ses citoyens. Nous croyons à une troisième voie numérique fondée sur les valeurs démocratiques et d'émancipation qui sont celles que nous portons en France depuis les Lumières. Ces valeurs, nous les partageons naturellement avec beaucoup d'autres pays, européens ou non européens. Et au cœur de ces valeurs, naturellement, il y a à la fois l'éthique et le respect à la vie privée. Nous avons un défi immense à, le re, à relever tous ensemble, gouvernement et société civile, pour que l'esprit et les principes d'Internet 
soit préservé. Un Internet libre et ouvert, c'est ce qui permet à chacun, en toute égalité, d'exister, de penser et d'agir dans le cyberespace. Nous devons préserver ce bien commun de l'humanité. C'est le défi de notre génération. C'est aussi la responsabilité qui nous incombe à nous, les penseurs et les faiseurs du web. Ce combat, c'est aussi celui que je porte avec mon entreprise Linagora depuis 18 ans. Nous n'avons jamais choisi la facilité. Tous les logiciels que nous développons sont des vrais logiciels libres. Ils sont libres et gratuits. C'est ce que nous appelons le free-free. Free à the beer and free à the freedom. Nous pensons que l'innovation n'a que de valeur que si elle est partagée. Ma plus grande fierté ne réside pas dans la performance de notre chiffre d'affaires, mais dans les impacts positifs que nous pouvons avoir. Permettre à chacun d'accéder librement et gratuitement à l'innovation, en particulier dans les pays en développement, est l'une de mes plus grandes satisfactions. Alors je pourrais aussi vous parler pendant des heures d'inclusion numérique ou d'enjeux de formation au métier du numérique, mais je sais que le temps nous est compté. Alors simplement, J'aimerais vous le redire, ce fut un honneur et un plaisir d'être avec vous au cours de ces trois jours. Et, chers amis, je forme un vœu. Faisons en sorte que notre Internet reste formidable. Make our Internet great forever. Merci. J'invite Eric Léandry, fondateur de Quant, à, à rejoindre le podium. Euh, Eric est aussi un leader de l'écosystème numérique français. Et encore une fois, son modèle porte des valeurs qui nous sont très chères, au sens où, par exemple, mais il y reviendra, Quant est un moteur de recherche alternatif qui était GDPR compliant bien avant le GDPR. Eric, à vous. Merci et merci de, de me recevoir, merci de recevoir Quant et merci à vous tous. Je ne vais pas pouvoir être aussi fort que toi en compliment, donc je vais aller directement à l'essentiel. Mesdames et messieurs, c'est un véritable honneur en fait de pouvoir m'adresser à vous en cette journée de clôture du 13e forum annuel sur la gouvernance de l'Internet. Et c'est d'autant plus un honneur que cette année l'IGF est organisée dans ces lieux à l'UNESCO c'est-à-dire au sein de l'une des, pr des principales institutions mondiales chargées de promouvoir le respect des droits internationaux et des droits de l'homme. Pendant trois jours, nous avons ici discuté des moyens de préserver ce qui fait d'Internet un lieu exceptionnel d'échange entre les individus et les cultures. Un développement économique et social, tout en réfléchissant aux manières les plus démocratiques d'éviter ou de corriger les excès qui menacent les fondements de nos sociétés. Hélas, je m'adresse à vous au lendemain de la commémoration de, de, du 13 novembre, des attentats du 13 novembre, qui nous poussent à réfléchir aux problématiques euh, du nécessaire dialogue entre les hommes et au fait que tout cela doit être renforcé. C'est une responsabilité que l'on partage tous. Lorsque j'ai posé les premières pierres du moteur de recherche Quant, c'était en 2011. C'est la même année où le Conseil des droits de l'homme des Nations Unies adoptait pour les entreprises, les principes directeurs de l'ONU relatifs aux droits de l'homme. Ces principes ont rappelé à tous les acteurs de la vie économique, y compris bien sûr dans l'industrie numérique, que nous avons la responsabilité de respecter les droits fondamentaux, les droits de l'homme, à travers toutes nos activités. C'est ce qui a toujours guidé l'action de Quant. Nous avons souhaité que l'ensemble des droits fondamentaux des internautes, et en particulier le droit au respect de la vie privée, et à la liberté d'accès à l'information soit préservée et même promue par la manière même dont nous concevons nos produits. C'est de l'éthique by design, c'est du privacy by design. Et c'est pourquoi nous avons fait le choix dès le départ de prendre le contre-pied des habitudes prises sur Internet et de ne collecter aucune donnée personnelle de nos utilisateurs. Ça nous oblige non seulement à garantir le parfait respect de la vie privée des internautes, mais aussi à offrir des résultats de recherche neutres qui n'enferment pas progressivement les utilisateurs dans leurs propres convictions, qui ne favorisent pas leur radicalisation, mais qui leur donnent à tous de voir la diversité du monde, ce que promet Internet. 
C'est ce modèle d'avenir que nous proposons. Il ne s'agit pas de l'imposer, mais nous pensons qu'il s'agit d'un modèle qu'il faut encourager, promouvoir, parce qu'il permettra un développement du mérite durable et respectueux de nos libertés les plus élémentaires. Chacun sent bien qu'on ne pourra pas continuer encore longtemps, sauf à abandonner totalement certaines de nos valeurs, à fouiller toujours plus loin dans l'intimité des gens pour gagner du chiffre d'affaires, tout en prétendant respecter la vie privée et la sécurité des données. Comment est-ce possible Chacun sait que l'on ne pourra pas continuer à jouer les pompiers pyromanes, qui d'un côté choisissent de promouvoir les contenus qui font le plus réagir les internautes, en jouant sur leurs cordes sensibles, personnel, intime, et de l'autre prétendent lutter contre les contenus qui radicalisent et rendent intolérants. Comment est-ce possible Il faut sortir de cette schizophrénie digitale comme l'on essaye aujourd'hui de réaliser une vraie transition écologique vers de nouvelles énergies vertes. Cette idée de la nouvelle énergie verte, c'est préserver notre écosystème et le devenir de notre planète. Nous pensons qu'il en est de même dans le numérique. Nous devons aller vers autre chose. Nous devons permettre un développement numérique durable et il est indispensable. Mais pour qu'il puisse exister et prendre toute sa place, il est essentiel que les internautes aient le choix des outils qu'ils veulent utiliser et que les régulateurs nationaux et régionaux, associés à tous les acteurs privés et publics, prennent toute la place qui leur est due. Ce libre choix et le pouvoir démocratique de régulation sont aujourd'hui menacés par le poids de certains monopoles ou oligopoles qui ont une puissance inédite, telle qu'on les traite hélas parfois aujourd'hui avec autant d'écart que les États. Le président de la République, Emmanuel Macron, l'a dit ici devant vous lundi, avec la formule qui a le mérite d'être claire, il faut sortir de la fausse alternative entre l'Internet ouvert et fermé, entre l'Internet californien et l'Internet chinois. Il ne faut pas renoncer à imposer nos règles aux acteurs industriels, et c'est le patron d'une entreprise privée qui vous le dit. Nous avons besoin que les règles du jeu décidées par nos représentants soient équitables pour tous et qu'elles soient respectées par tous. Cela passera notamment par une volonté décuplée de lutter beaucoup plus vite et plus fort contre les abus de position dominante qui freinent le développement d'un Internet durable et d'assurer aux consommateurs un véritable choix des services qu'ils veulent utiliser sur l'Internet. Car in fine, ce sont bien les citoyens qui décideront à travers leur choix de l'Internet qu'ils veulent, à condition que ce choix soit correctement éclairé et qu'il leur soit vraiment proposé. Nous avons besoin des Américains. Nous avons besoin des Chinois, nous avons besoin des Russes, mais nous avons également besoin des Africains, des Indiens, des Sud-Américains, du reste de l'Asie, des Européens, en fait des cinq continents. On pourrait même rajouter le sixième si vous voulez. Et donc, nous avons besoin des Nations Unies. Nous avons plus que jamais besoin de travailler et continuer à permettre à Internet d'être un réseau qui soit protégé et qui soit surtout neutre pour le reste et pour toujours. Merci à tous. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we will now start our open mic session. So if anybody from the audience wants to uh, make an intervention, can you please line up? of those two mics, one to the left there and one to the right. And also, if you are online, um, please feel to use the speaking queue. Um, the instructions are on the front page. OK, uh, thank you very much. I think you were first. Um, we're going to alternate between the queues. Um, Ambassador Martino and I are the co-chairs for this particular session. Um, we really want to hear from the community, so we will be taking notes, and of course it's transcribed, streamed, and archived. Um, we will tend to respond as little as possible to allow maximum time for the community, but we really want everybody to rest assured that um, we're taking very, very careful note of any of the, the comments. Um, we're running timers for two minutes. Again, that's to facilitate um, participation online. And um, again, we'll just alternate back and forth between the queue. And if you could state your name, um, country, and the stakeholder group you're representing, and speak slowly for the record. Um, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Good afternoon. I am Lily from Ghana, and an Internet Society youth at IGF. Hello. It's my first IGF, and one that has been a lot helpful. I sat in a couple of sessions, and a couple of messages were my highlights, particularly the one on digital inclusion and accessibility. 
I sat in a session for bridging the digital divide in accessibility with people living with disabilities. I realized the divide, the divide could stem from two places. One, the devices, and two, accessibility to network infrastructure. In terms of network infrastructure, we have seen many initiatives to enhance infrastructure provision. There are remains a rift with devices that are all encompassing and suitable for all persons with health conditions that are limiting. It is in this light that I suggest, in addition to the multi-stakeholder nature of the IGF, we have a clear interdisciplinary approach to, so much as to com capture um, thoroughly all sectors of human engagement. This will further enhance our quest to build an internet of trust by first capturing the trust of everyone by constant engagement. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is Steve Zeltzer. I'm with LaborNet APC in San Francisco and California. Um, this is the third IGF conference I've attended, and it seems that every conference that we ha I've attended, the issue of uh, ability of the other de underdeveloped countries to, to have the internet is in question. Um, and we're talking about the wealthiest world, uh, built trillions of dollars being spent on war, and yet we can't have electricity in Africa and other countries. So we have a real problem uh, of resources and priority of the resources. The resources are going to wars, they're going to other things, they're not going for the development of infrastructure in other countries that need it to develop the internet. And I see that as absolutely critical, and I, I, to have to come back to another conference and hear the same thing is uh, problematic. Uh, the second aspect, I think, and this has not really been dealt with in, in my concern, and that is automation technology robotization uh, of the working class. And this is having a massive effect in the United States and other countries. Millions of people are losing their jobs, uh, and the gig economy threatens uh, the future of stability for working people, uh, not just in the underdeveloped world, but in the advanced countries in the United States, particularly. And I think that this has to be addressed. What is going to happen to the working class, the mass of people, with uh, these technologies, AI, uh, their future? And it has to be a, it's a world issue, but it's also an issue for the developing countries, uh, which has to be addressed, I think, at the next conference. Lastly, uh, we have uh, in San Francisco, people talk about California. Uh, it's like dystopia right now with these wildfires that are taking place uh, in, in California. Uh, climate is having a radical effect, and this has to be addressed because you cannot uh, build this world in a vacuum. And, the, and the, what is going on now in California, mass fires breaking out, threatens not just California, the whole world. And this is another issue that needs an international action uh, to address uh, the environment. And I think that that is connected very much because uh, those people in Silicon Valley and those people who think that they can go on uh, independently of what is going on globally are mistaken. Uh, they're living in a, a false world, and I think that has to be confronted uh, because when I go back to California, I may have to think about getting a mask, you know, f for my breathing, which I thought was only in some places like Beijing or others, but right now in California. So this has to be addressed as well. Thank you. Thank you. Well, can you have the floor? Thank you. My name is Walter Natres. I'm from the Netherlands and representing the technical community here. In the past year and the past conference, we have heard a lot about potential changes that the IGF could go through. And we have been working on a program called Strengthening Cooperation within the context of the IGF. There is a second iteration published recently. And I would like to take out a few highlights and give two examples where things could go better. We are advancing pilots or advising pilots on intercessional work to go to work differently than happens now, but also to have more proactive sessions where people actually work together towards some sort of an outcome or solution or best practices, whatever we'd like to call them. Another thing that we've noticed by working this way is that how hard it is to come to decisions within the traditional IGF process. And we have been trying to find online and offline processes that can actually help in decision making, and that is something we asked the MAG to series look into. Um, the third one is MAG leadership. What the gentleman just said there, there are so overarching topics that may just not come up through the regular bottom-up process. 
So if the MAG could be in an open, transparent way, bring in topics from a larger community point of view, perhaps these very, very big topics could find a place in the IGF as well. And I would like to give three examples on the basis of what we've just been through the past three days where things could go better. And don't take this personal, they're just examples. I've, this is my ninth IGF in 10 years. So if I go to a session on child abuse on the internet, I know after nine years how bad it is. So if I have to go through one and a half hour hearing that all again without any solutions or potential ways forward coming out of a session, that something is being done wrong. So again, MAG leadership, what did you actually help to bring this topic further and assist towards solutions? The other one is on coordination. That is something which comes with this. If there are 10 topics on cybersecurity, why not bring the most brilliant minds together and ask what would be the way forward instead of hearing the same story in 10 sessions? And finally, let me come to tangible, return to tangible outcomes. If we could organize working sessions like that, or proactive sessions, whatever we call them, then there will be some tangible outcomes without negotiation because we could have two solutions which are not the same, but at least it gives a direction that we can work on. And I hope seriously that the MAG is taking this strength and cooperation report seriously, and we'll see what we can do in 2019. Thank you very much. Thank you, Walt. Ernesto Rodriguez, in nombre de la delegación de Cuba. Ante todo, agradecer la oportunidad que nos da este foro de trabajar, discutir, y seguir avanzando en temas tan importantes que hoy marcan la vida y el desarrollo de nuestros pueblos. Resaltar que las TIC son cada día un factor más determinante en la vida de los ciudadanos del mundo. La elevación de la seguridad y la confianza en su uso constituyen elementos que junto al respeto y la observancia de la ética y el impulso a la innovación y el desarrollo de Internet son ejes fundamentales. Agradezco, reitero, al IGF por propiciar el debate de estos temas. Debemos trabajar por desarrollar una gobernanza democrática y participativa, basada en la Carta de la Organización de Naciones Unidas, el derecho internacional y el multilateralismo, con la participación también de todas las partes interesadas, según sus respectivos roles y responsabilidades. Las, te las telecomunicaciones y las TIC no pueden verse al margen de las personas y de su desarrollo. Corresponde a todos, gobiernos, empresas, academia y sociedad civil, evitar que se utilicen con fines subversivos, militares y delictivos, y con ello contrarrestar la proliferación del ciberdelito y el ciberterrorismo. En este sentido, aliento a la Secretaría del IGF a continuar analizando estos temas en próximos foros. Muchas gracias. Thank you. And thank you for reminding us as well that in fact this session is interpreted in the six UN languages. So please do do feel free to stand up and, and speak in your own language. Renata? Hi. Uh, I am Renata Quino Ribeiro. I'm a third term MAG member, so now I am community. <laughs> so, I get to come here, however, to thank Undesa and uh, Lynn for the early appointment of new MAG members and uh, the opportunity to get to know some of them and in a dialogue with uh, Secretary Liu. And I think that we get to know them uh, more as they, their names are already online. There will be press release and on. I wish all the best for the civil society new MAG members, Carlos Afonso uh, from Brazil, who was from CGIBR, and uh, Maria Paz Canales from the Direitos Digitales. Uh, they are great. And uh, on the language efforts, I think we need still to remember that the IGF is a project that belongs to all of us because some rooms, for example, just in the, now in the IGF lack space, the Caribbeans were feeling left out. So take a look. If you see translators in the booth, there will be translation. If you don't, find a way to include people. And that also works for remote participation. I have a friend who is pregnant at home trying to watch every session and 
and she tries to uh, collaborate and sometimes the speaker's cue is not reminded and there, there needs to be uh, conscious efforts of all of us for that. And finally, I'd like to thank all the Secretariat and the newcomers for the collaboration on the Knowledge Cafe Space, the newcomers track, which Lynn opened up. And just today, a former MAG member, Mike Nelson, came to ask about the, his report. So that was really nice to see. Um, and uh, we need that space. We need the space to decompress as well. I hope this keeps happening on the next IGFs. Thank you very much. Thank you, Renata. Uh, my name is Farzan Ebadi from Internet Governance Project at Georgia Tech. First, I say the positive things. Thank you very much. This was, uh, and I thank the French uh, government for hosting this event. Uh, this has been very organized and very well done. Uh, but now, um, so I'm going to read my statement. I think Internet Governance was kind of lost at this meeting. Attending sessions after sessions, rarely did I come across sessions that were about internet governance issues that this community is supposed to address and can actually address in other venues. We cannot address local issues. We cannot address country level issues. We are here to keep the internet global, accessible, open and free. I don't want to define the mandate of Internet Governance Forum. I just want to remind us why we are here. And we need to talk about what affects these values. I suggest to the multi-stakeholder advisory group to listen to its community, to represent us in its decision making on how to shape the agenda and set up an agenda that is representative of us. Let's not forget why we are here. Youth, gender, artificial intelligence, blockchain are, are very important issues as long as they affect internet governance. That's how we can help. We are here to talk about, to talk to government, civil society, private sector, technical communities and others whom we do not get to interact with. We are here to talk to key players, decision makers. Doesn't mean that they're like in the multi-stakeholder environment, all the stakeholder groups are decision makers in a way. So we are here to talk to them, but sometimes I just feel like we are, oh, I'm done. So I'm just, I just feel like we are not talking to the decision makers and people that actually make decisions or we are not bringing the issues at the table to talk to the community. Thank you. Thank you. Let me just check for a moment to see, do we have two people in the queue remotely? It says hand down, but they're there. So why don't we put them sort of a third queue as we rotate through. Um, Anya, do you need time to set them up and bring them in or? Just a second, sir. We're All those beeps are promising, but if, if, we need, <laughs> if we need a few more seconds, we can go to the next speaker and come back. This is you. Okay, sir. Thank you. My name is Rajendra Pratap Gupta. I'm from India. Namaste. I think uh, I should first congratulate United Nations for IGF and the government of France for organizing a hassle-free, seamless conference for people like me who've come thousands of miles away. I think this has been a great learning. I have always believed that this is the most exciting time in the history of human race. And in the last three days, I'm convinced that technology is a great enabler. So on one side, there is a great opportunity with technology, but also at the same time, I think automation and technology proliferation creates a scare of loss of jobs. So while IGF-like body, I think when you host the next year in Germany, you would see that technology not only addresses proliferation of technology, productivity, and profits, but also people come at the core. And with this, I hope that if you are making notes for what next, I think uh, 
I would expect a roadmap of how do we create jobs using technology with more specific details about sectoral jobs that we create because of a country like India, which has 1.3 billion population. And I think that there's a prediction of 69% of jobs under threat due to automation. I get concerned at times. So at the same time, I remain optimistic with the kind of things that I see happening. And I hope that you will address that. And also, lastly, I think India should be ready to host IGF in the near future. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let me just check with Anya in the online queue. If you want, Anya, we can just, uh, are you ready now? No, okay. I'll wait for you to just signal if you just wave your hand and then we'll, we'll put them in with everybody's support. You have the queue, uh, sorry, you have the floor. Bonjour, je m'appelle Florence Poznanski. Je suis uh, militante de l'ONG Internet Sans Frontières basée au Brésil. Euh, J'aimerais euh, m'exprimer sur euh, les discours du président Macron euh, en ouverture qui euh, a fait couler pas mal d'encre euh, dans les discussions, en tout cas ici beaucoup de débats. Et je pense en effet que c'était un discours euh, riche, intense et qui avait en tout cas la, la, la propriété donc, de nous poser un agenda complet et on voit l'intention et l'intérêt qu'a apporté euh, le président à ce sujet. Euh, mais néanmoins, en tant que société civile, j'ai quelques éléments sur lesquels j'aimerais compléter. Alors effectivement, euh, s'il est important d'attirer l'attention sur euh, l'importance de la régulation, notamment des puissances démocratiques, comme il l'a dit, Internet ne peut pas être un, un espace sans loi, ou bien euh, contrôlé par des puissances non élues, et il est important que euh, l'ensemble de l'opinion publique et du débat public puissent investir euh, l'espace d'Internet. Je pense qu'il y a aussi un biais dangereux à considérer qu'Internet serait l'unique responsable euh, de la véhiculation des discours euh, de haine ou bien euh, de la radicalisation, puisqu'on sait que Internet est aussi un espace où on, sait, où on voit s'exprimer les choses qui, a, qui existent en dehors de l'Internet. Et lorsqu'on voit, par exemple, dans le monde, la montée euh, de puissances euh, contre les droits humains, antidémocratiques, fascistes, nationalistes, on sait que c'est un processus bien plus global dans lequel Internet est intégré, et on sait également que c'est le résultat d'une certaine série de phénomènes économiques qui ont conduit à, conduit à certaines précarisations euh, sociétales. Et je pense que du coup, Internet ne peut pas être le seul euh, coupable, ou en tout cas euh, indiqué dans cette situation, pour pouvoir euh, en, disons, subir les, les conséquences en termes de régulation. Et je pense que même si nous partageons effectivement ces valeurs, démocratique. Lorsque le président Macron dit oui, nous, ce sont nos valeurs, il faut défendre nos valeurs et euh, nos idées pour qu'Internet soit comme ça, je pense qu'il y a un biais particulièrement dangereux sur cette discussion-là. Et euh, lorsqu'on parle de neutralité, il est important de rappeler que la neutralité, elle s'applique bien aux données et pas au contenu. Et je pense que c'est important justement de garder à l'esprit cette idée. Et enfin, je voudrais m'exprimer aussi sur euh, l'appel de Paris. Euh, sur la sécurité et la confiance sur Internet. Je pense qu'il est effectivement très bienvenu de voir une coopération entre les États euh, euh, se produire et euh, se développer, mais il est inquiétant de penser qu'on puisse penser la régulation et la sécurité euh, des données sans discuter la surveillance pratiquée par les États, sans parler également de la nécessité de protéger l'anonymat et la cryptographie. Et il est, nous semble a priori impensable de penser une protection du cyberespace sans que ces débats soient réellement posés. Merci. Thank you. Sala. Thank you, Lynn. Sala Nieta Tamaniko, I'm a row for the record, uh, outgoing MEG member, but speaking in her individual capacity. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the French government for being excellent hosts and also to Yun Dessa, the IGF Secretary at the MEG Chair, uh, for the privilege to serve. Uh, I was just listening to some of the comments from the floor and I thought I should uh, invite the global community, like those especially who want to input into thematic sessions, to input in the first MEG meeting, which will happen next year, and be on the lookout for the, for the link, because there's always a live stream, I mean, remote participation, so you can give your views right from the beginning of the year. That's the first thing. Second thing I'd like to say is, uh, since we're taking stock and um, moderated two sessions this week, which were, the first one was media content, second one being uh, cybersecurity, 
One of the interesting things we saw as we, took, uh, as we were taking stock, particularly in the context of the internet we trust as a, as a general theme, is that we, what we're witnessing in the, the world today is their threats to their trust. And uh, if I were to summarize the threats, it would be a fear. In, one is the first one being fear, the second one being the love of money, and the third one being, um, uh, for the life of me, I can't remember right now, but that doesn't matter. And so what we, what we essentially are seeing are two extreme ends, which has been described as the Californian versus the China model. But from where I'm sitting, both do surveillance. Uh, one does it overtly, one does it covertly. So the thing is, one of the things that I would like the global community to consider is having a common set of values. Because yes, we may differ in terms of, in terms of governance systems, but to look into global norms and, and values that we can subscribe to, to make um, collaboration much more feasible and seamless. So with that, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Salah. And I think we now have the online participant. Maybe you can use the hand mic there, Anya. For some reason, those two mics aren't working, even though they light up. Thank you. Sorry for taking time. So reading the comment from Mr. Manohar Valpuri. The Secretary General renewed the 2018, uh, 2019 Internet Governance Forum Multi-Stakeholder Advisory Group today. Its 52 members will advise on developing the program of the 14th Internet Governance Forum to be hosted by the Government of Germany in 2019. What measures are discussed to ensure participation online, leveraging the power of internet more effectively, similar to participation on site in the future IGFs and several UN conferences? Thank you. Th thank you. Online participation is extremely important to us and, and I think we made um, fairly significant strides the last few years, but we certainly have more to do. I don't know if there's anything specific you'd like to add to that which is a pretty concrete comment. Uh, yes, that's very true. And our uh, next year's hosts know the importance of it and we are making plans to make sure that it can operate as smoothly as possible. Yeah. Thank you, you have the floor. Um, hi, I'm from the Network Rights Coalition in Brazil and I'd like to read an open letter in defense of the internet in Brazil we wrote. On the occasion of the Internet Governance Forum of 2018 held on November 12, 12th to 14th in Paris, the Network Rights Coalition wishes to declare its position regarding the risks that internet policies in Brazil may confront with the perspective of the Bolsonaro government. Brazil has made sig significant progress in recent years in the fields of freedom ex of expression, access to information and democratic management of communications through multi stakeholder internet governance, which must be ensured in the face of emerging threats. The Internet Civil Rights Framework and the General Law on Data Protection and Policies for Expanding Access and Connectivity are references to these ach achievements. They have given in Brazil a prominent position and in international recognition regarding cooperation between public sector, business, academia and civil society for multi-stakeholder governance, which has been determinant for the development, development of the Internet in the country balancing the demands of different groups of society. The civil rights framework was the fruit, fruit of this pluralist cooperation, establishing internationally agreed principles, guarantees, rights and duties, and, and it's now a reference to the world. Another effort that also involved a positive articulation between these various sectors was the approval of the general law of protection of personal data in line with the European GDPR in order to guarantee privacy and access policies providing legal security for economic development and new technologies. The law also provides the necessary conditions for the construction of public policies based on the pro processing of data by the state in order, in order to avoid the massive and ar arbitrary surveillance of the public powers on citizens. In this sense, it is... 
reprehensible that a national authority for the protection of personal data, whose role is fundamental to the effect effectiveness of the new law, was vetoed by the current presented president of the Republic. In addition, there is the risk announced by the elected government that the regulation and oversight of the explo exploitation of personal data in Brazil will be submitted to a military body such as the Brazilian Inter Intelligence Agency, which compromises democratic freedoms. The current moment also requires special attention to ensure the security of communications and individual and collective freedoms. With, with the democratic participation of the various sectors, in order to enable, enable their, their social control, in order to enable their, their social control, privacy is cent central to this, and, con and concrete measures must be taken to pr protect the data stored in the public and private spheres by the adoption and promotion of secure, secure technologies and the defense of cri cryptography. It is essential, lastly, to strengthen the, the institutions that have worked with these policies, guaranteeing the advances mentioned above and the democratic constructions of internet policies, especially the Internet Steering Committee in Brazil, the National Education and Research Network, and universities and public research centers that contribute to, dev to the development and sovereignty of infrastructure and the internet in Brazil. In this sense, the Network Rights Coalition denounces the seriousness of the practices adopted in electoral propaganda that involve internet pro platforms which dominate the social networking ma market. WhatsApp, for, ex for example, served political interests interest that influenced the election scenario with serious violations of the electoral law. For all these reasons, the members of the member organizations of the Network Rights Coalition seek with this, with this letter to mobilize international solidarity around the defense of digital rights in Brazil. There is no room in internet governance for anti-democratic measures. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to ask everybody to do their very best to keep to the time so that we can ensure we have uh, time for all the comments. Thank you. Hi, my name is Susanya Herring. Uh, I'm an executive committee member of the Southeastern European Dialogue on Internet Governance and the coordinator of Youth IGF Turkey. But right now I'm speaking as the lead of the working group on youth participation in, in Internet Governance Forum 2018. Uh, we started this group as part of the YCIG, which is the official dynamic coalition on youth uh, of the IGF. And we started to identify youth interest workshops and try to bring them together with youth experts that would be in person, uh, present here in Paris. And we reached out to approximately 10 workshops. Uh, sadly, only two or three of them replied. Uh, some of them replied only by saying, you are welcome to attend from the floor, which I'd like to put on record that uh, as the IGF format, we don't need, no one needs an invitation to attend from the floor. So we saw that as a very disappointing non-answer. And I'd, me and the other members of the working group who uh, put time and effort in this uh, work would like to say that let's please stop tokenizing youth and uh, talking about them as if they're not in the room. And when I say youth, please don't think about young people who are like doughy-eyed and attending and don't know things about anything because there are impressive entrepreneurs who are young people, there are impressive activists who are young people, there are uh, budding government officials who are young people. So although what we, our coalition is called youth, uh, maybe we need to step outside that definition and stop seeing youth as just youth but just members of a stakeholder group who just happen to be young. Uh, in that sense, I hope this changes next year. And one last thing, going over time, just 10 or 20 seconds. Um, there were some other workshops who uh, are named Youth IGF Movement who did not communicate any organizing plans uh, with either the YCIG or IGF recognized um, Youth IGF forums that are publicly available on the website, and these siloed uh, efforts about what youth can do or should do is frankly uh, disappointing, and I think it wastes time on all efforts because 
as everyone has said, together, when we do things together, it just makes more sense instead of repeating the same efforts in closed groups. So thank you. Thank you. Excellent points and clearly some things we can take note of next year. Uh, you have the floor. Bonjour, je suis Betty Fosta. En fait, je viens de la communauté numérique de Guadeloupe, dans la Caraïbe, et euh, je voudrais remercier en fait le comité d'organisation euh, France et la GF pour euh, ma première participation, et puis euh, l'organisation internationale de la francophonie qui a fait un vrai travail euh, envers les francophones pour euh, diffuser l'information. Et euh, partager avec vous une remarque que j'ai faite euh, au niveau du, du café euh, en fait de l'AGF avec Renata, à savoir deux points. Première chose, euh, en tant que caribéenne, j'ai voulu assister euh, à la réunion LAC aujourd'hui. Ce n'était qu'en espagnol. Mon voisin qui est à gauche, on, on parle créole tous les deux, on parle anglais tous les deux, on parle français tous les deux, mais c'était qu'en espagnol. Donc ça a été vraiment comme un rejet parce que je ne parle pas du tout l'espagnol. Il n'y avait aucun élément... Euh, matériel pour pouvoir assister. Donc il y a vraiment une nécessité pour dire quel que soit l'élément, qu'il y ait au moins euh, un écrit dans une autre langue, parce que c'est ce un minimum de respect pour euh, les autres communautés. Deuxième élément, c'est qu'hier au soir, euh, j'ai voulu euh, voir comment se construisait le modèle multipartenarial pour la cybersécurité en Afrique. Donc j'assiste à cet événement. Il se trouve que les organisateurs, les personnes qui participent, euh, sont totalement sur euh, une notion de modèle, on va dire, très euh, amer nord américaine centré pour l'Afrique. Euh, je trouve ça un petit peu dommage qu'on peut parler de... Je vous ai indiqué, je suis intervenue en disant comment vous voulez penser, en fait, euh, la notion de cybersécurité sur la, par rapport à l'Afrique, alors que la, une part de la, de, des points de, de faille en cybersécurité, c'est des éléments culturels. Donc la moitié de l'Afrique parle français, la moitié de l'Afrique euh, a une autre façon de penser, et on va leur imposer un modèle, un seul modèle, et en parlant de, de notion de multipartenariat. Ce n'est pas possible, donc il faut vraiment changer ça. Euh, ne serait-ce qu'avoir une notion de addendum vers les autres, même si c'est une réflexion anglaise qui en avance, travailler sur cette notion de consultation euh, par la suite pour dire que c'est un modèle réellement multipartenarial. On ne peut pas parler de, de global si on, on est vraiment concentré sur une communauté et une logique de pensée. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Anya, for our remote participant, our online participant. Hello, my name is Lawrence. I don't know if I'm on. You are, yes. Oh, great, thank you. Um, my name is Lawrence. I'm speaking from the remote hub in Abuja, Nigeria. I want to thank um, IDF for giving us this opportunity uh, to follow what's happening in Paris. Um, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the team for uh, all the efforts that was put into ensuring that we could have some form of connection uh, while the meeting was off on Monday. Uh, we were able to follow uh, different sessions by directly connecting to the WebEx and uh, from YouTube. Uh, if these uh, models or if these uh, tracks were not available, we would have completely be blanked out. Um, I'm sure it took a lot of effort. We want to thank uh, the tech team for, for doing this. Um, I also want to thank Derek again for giving us an opportunity um, to be able to uh, have this hub live in Abuja. Um, earlier today, um, the hub was following sessions in one of the rooms. I recognize that the last speaker was one of the participants uh, in that particular session. And it was difficult for us to uh, follow what was going on because the language was not in English. Um, I know that we have headsets and translations in uh, different rooms, but out here, uh, aside from this remote hub, I'm sure they, I don't have the statistics, but I'm sure that there will be so many uh, participants following remotely. Uh, it will do us a lot of good if we standardize communication such that uh, we won't have to strain our eyes trying to get what people are saying from the, uh, uh, the translations that we see on the screen. Thanks again for this um, opportunity to intervene. 
Thank you, and thank you to everyone participating in the remote hub there as well. Sir, you have the floor. Bonjour, mes amis. Меня зовут Евгений, Российская Федерация. Представляю академическое сообщество. Мой институт активно работает с нашей администрацией в вопросах интернета. В настоящее время интернет уже вырос из сети специализированных сообществ, военных, ученых, студентов. И является по факту киберкопией нашего мира со всеми недостатками, со всеми достоинствами и всем его разнообразием. И, к сожалению, мы уже не можем оставлять его наедине с собой в надежде на саморегулирование. Мы считаем, что как в нашей реальной жизни у нас есть национальные регулирования и законодательства, у нас есть международные акты, так и здесь, в виртуальной среде, мы должны иметь международную систему управления интернетом. Здесь, в начале форума, президент Франции высказал такую фразу, что у нас есть два полюса в методах управления – калифорнийская система и китайская система, но мы должны выработать сбалансированную систему управления интернетом. В России в данном вопросе управления интернетом видит ведущую роль государств, межправительственных организаций, таких как в системе ООН, таких как ЮНЕСКО, таких как Международный союз электросвязи. Мы Отмечаем, что государства имеют суверенное право и обязанность защищать персональные данные своих граждан, необходимые процессы устанавливать, как эти данные должны обрабатываться и как они должны видеть свет в общую сеть интернет. Но при этом мы поддерживаем предложение, высказанное здесь, о том, что нам нужен третий путь, что нам необходим сбалансированный путь не кидаясь в какие-то крайности. На данном форуме, я видел статистику, у нас представлено где-то в районе 100, 100 стран, более 3000 участников, и выслушав все проблемы, все озабоченности, которые различные наше сообщество высказали, я верю, что мы на этой площадке можем найти определенное решение, услышав друг друга. Россия последовательно выступает за создание системы управления и доверия в сети, разработку международных норм, прозрачных и обеспечивающих равноправное управление и соблюдение законности в сети интернет. Также мы верим и выступаем за создание единого международного механизма управления интернет, правила которого должны быть разработаны и одобрены всеми участниками, всеми странами. И отдельное спасибо организаторам, докладчикам и всем участникам за столь разные точки зрения. Это очень полезно. Спасибо. Thank you. Thank you. Derek, you have the floor. Good afternoon. Uh, this is Derek O'Halloran from the World Economic Forum. Um, I'd like to start off by thanking uh, all of the organizers and hosts and congratulating you all on an excellent uh, installment of the Internet Governance Forum, um, as well as all of the, the volunteers. Also recognize all the members of the community that have helped, uh, uh, collaborated on um, key topics during the course of the year, such as internet access and inclusion, um, the dynamic coalition, Internet of Things, and so on. Um, on a slightly different topic, a couple of weeks ago, I read the, uh, the report, the most recent report from IPCC uh, on climate change. And I almost felt like everybody should just stop what they're doing and we should all go work on that. Um, but upon reflection, it kind of struck uh, me as a reminder of the importance of the work that we all do. Um, our ability to achieve the goals that we have set ourselves around climate change and in fact any of the sustainable development goals is massively enhanced by the internet and related digital technologies. But if the problems that technology, internet related technologies create are more than the problems they solve, well then none of that will happen. And so I, I introduce this because yes, technology can help with lots of shared goals, but we also need shared goals for what we're trying to achieve with the internet. And in this context, and in the context of a number of discussions about the evolution of the Internet Governance Forum, I'd like to express the full support from the World Economic Forum for the idea of strengthening the, the Internet Governance Forum. And also highlight that as a multi-stakeholder mission-oriented organization, 
uh, ourselves, but of a, with a network that is highly different and potentially highly complementary to the, to the multi-stakeholder network that IGF represents. I would encourage the community as well as the MAG to, to think about how we may leverage the relative strengths of both of these communities in 2019 and beyond. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. Um, do we have another online participant ready? Anya? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Hello? We can hear you. Please uh, go ahead. Uh, I'm uh, Amir Mokabdari, PhD in Media and Internet Government in Tehran University. Uh, I would like to <clears throat> uh, uh, add my comments here and thank IGF for this uh, well-organized uh, meeting. Uh, we all have common dream, digital dream, new, fair, democracy, transparent, multilateral, rule-based, ethical, and universal internal governance model within UN framework. We all against me first school of internal government and digital universe and digital unilateralism and nationalistic policy are greatest enemy of the digital peaceful coexistence. I hope one day in near future this common dream may come to true. If every one of us feels that he is internet governor. Only we should find other roles and responsibilities to the digital age. Thank you. I think that was the end, but I want to make sure. I see they've gone out of the queue. So, Nigel, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, your Excellencies, Ministers, Ladies and Gentlemen, Madam Chair. Two years ago at the IGF, I talked about how the young can inspire us, how the young can inspire democracy, how the young are needed for this internet governance paradigm of ours. Perhaps it was an address that wasn't needed. Perhaps it was an address out of its time. But clearly the young and the youth, as we saw, and whatever characteristic we apply to them, as we saw from our colleagues from Brazil, from Turkey, from Mexico, from many other constituencies here in the last few days, the youth are leading the way. Whether we say the youth, whether we call them a stakeholder group, this is the future of the internet. So there's no need for me to speak about the youth today. Last year in Geneva, where I currently live, we talked about the IGF. We talked about the future of the IGF. We talked about fighting to save the IGF. We were concerned about the future and stability of the IGF. We were concerned that not enough stakeholders were here in the room to really make the IGF this multi-stakeholder marvelous forum it is. Why were we worried? Look what we've had in the last couple of days. Thanks to Paris, thanks to France, thanks to the President, and I was almost going to speak in French, but I won't, uh, <laughs> I won't risk it. This has been an inspirational IGF. France has put the IGF back on the map. Paris has inspired us. But, Madam Chair, we have other things to worry about. As we heard in President Macron's speech, there are many issues to do with the internet that we have to confront today. And it is not, I don't think, characterized into three stakeholder groups, perhaps. Perhaps there are different groups, perhaps there's a China constituency, a California constituency. But let's not talk about that. Let's talk about the principles and the values that underpin this internet that we want. 
that we want an open internet, that we want a single internet, that we want a free internet that everyone can join in, that everyone can inspire innovation and education and passion about, that everyone can do something to contribute to society, that people can connect to it. And Madam Chair, if we want that, what better place to discuss it? What better place to discuss regulations? Not in one stakeholder setting, not with one group of stakeholders, but at this marvellous IGF where so many people come together to chart the future of this asset that we must all cherish. Thank you. Thank you, Nigel. And I'm already looking forward to next year's remarks as well. <laughs> you have the floor, sir. Thank you, Chairperson. My name is Khalid Ibrahim. I am the director of the Golf Center for Human Rights. I am speaking here on behalf of civil society organizations in MENA. Uh, I would like to start by thanking volunteers and all the people who are involved here in France in organizing this IGF. And really, this is my uh, third IGF. This is my third IGF, and again, I witness uh, the weak uh, representation of the MENA region. Uh, I noticed that there are about 22 workshops or sessions on digital security or cybersecurity. It is an important topic, but not to this level, 22 sessions. Here in MENA, we have a lot of chronic problems, the lack of network and neutrality, uh, accessibility, and problems related to uh, freedom of expression on the net. Uh, because of the cyber crimes law, we have some of our colleagues, they are in prison because of a post on Facebook or because of a tweet on a Twitter. And I believe strongly that human rights should be in the very heart of the IGF, any IGF. I talked about this last year, and I'm talking this year about it, and I hope that the MAC members will address this weak representation of the MENA region. Today we got a meeting with some participants from the MENA region, and we agreed to do something about it. You know, there are many solutions, including a sub-forum for MENA in the next uh, uh, IGF, and there are some other uh, measures that could be taken, but I hope this time the MAC members will look uh, closely at the problems that we have in MENA region. Thank you so much. Thank you. Increasing participation from the MENA region, as in many of the other regions, is extremely important to the MAG. And we did have a working group on comms and outreach, which attempts to do some of that, but we really require the community to step up and help with outreach to each and every day in all of our own activities. So thank you. Um, Anya, is there somebody online? And then, again, we'll keep going through third queue. Anya? You want to come back in a minute? Okay. Well, I mean, just so we're, we're doing a sort of round the robin here. So, okay, so we'll go to the next queue. Bonjour, je suis Mamadoulo, membre du comité préparatoire sur la gouvernance de l'Internet. Je vais parler à ma capacité propre, sénégalais, membre du secteur privé. Je voudrais juste saluer ici l'effort fait par le secrétaire du FGI euh, à propos de la traduction des contenus dans les six langues des Nations Unies. Je pense que c'est une excellente initiative qui nous permet de parler à tous. Nous les encourageons vivement à aller de l'avant et même, et même aller vers la création de contenu direct dans d'autres langues sans passer par la traduction. Cela aide vivement dans la sensibilisation et la communication Et la communauté tout entière devrait ici prêt, être prête à soutenir ce projet. Cela nous aidera aussi à adresser le sujet critique sur le multilinguisme et le multipartisme, gage de diversité et d'inclusion. Nous ne pouvons pas gouverner Internet sans tout le monde, mais passer par la langue 
nous permet d'avoir tout le monde. Merci à tous. Thank you, Mamadou. You have the floor. Hi, everyone. This is Jenna. I am Youth Ambassador from NatMission.Asia and one of the organizers of the Youth IGF in Asia Pacific region. This is my first time here attending IGF, and in the past three days, I have been trying my best to attend as many workshops related to youth as possible. And after attending the workshops and as a youth ambassador from Asia Pacific regions, I realized that it is essential to bring issues that Asia Pacific regions are facing to IGF, especially from the youth perspective. Because Asia Pacific is diverse regions that include people from different cultural backgrounds, language, and level of development. And I hope in the future, more youth from different regions and diverse backgrounds will be invited to different workshops to advocate for the community in IGF. And we will have more interactive conversations among youth in the workshop, which the setting of the dialogue may allow us to exchange more on our experiences and opinion at a deeper level. And eventually might help in eliminating digital divide and facilitating higher level of inclusions in the context of rapid development and advancement of the internet. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to the last two speakers for, for keeping to the time as well. Um, I'm going to have to close the queue in a moment if we're to end this part of the session on time and I look at the folks that are there. So if there's something you really want to say, um, you should please get in the queue, otherwise it will close with the, the individuals that are standing there now. Miguel, you have the floor. Gracias, Lynn, por darme la palabra. Muchas gracias al gobierno de Francia por entregarnos un, inter, un IGF de mucha calidad que nos permite impulsarnos hacia el 2019 con, con mucho ánimo. Gracias por, a la Secretaría y a la Presidenta por, por el trabajo que hicieron junto con el MAC para poder llevar adelante esta, este programa. Eh, quería primero agradecer a todos los participantes porque este foro de múltiples partes interesadas no es eh, posible sin cada uno de nosotros, sin cada una de las personas que vinieron y aquellas que están siguiendo desde sus hogares. Entonces, eh, esta participación para nosotros es un impulso muy grande. Eh, perdón, que no me presenté. Eh, soy Miguel Candia, miembro del MAC de, de, del sector de gobiernos de Paraguay. Eh, quería también agregar un, un punto más. Eh, cuando hablamos de, de lo que fue el IGF de este año, es muy importante resaltar que los temas que nos, que nos llevaron adelante, que nos motivaron en este año, son un puente para el año siguiente y, y también son un, un mandato para el MAC, del cual soy miembro y, y seguiré siendo miembro en el 2019, de cómo llevar a cabo el relacionamiento externo del MAC, del IGF y del IGF mismo con relación a los otros foros de Naciones Unidas, teniendo en cuenta de que el IGF es único eh, en el sistema de Naciones Unidas, por, por, por consecuencia su relacionamiento con otros foros, incluyendo, incluyendo el panel de alto nivel del Secretario General sobre Cooperación Digital, tienen que tener en cuenta el mandato de las comunidades y asimismo permitir que siempre se tenga en consideración al mundo en desarrollo y particularmente a los países sin litoral marítimo y a los pequeños estados insulares. Gracias. Thank you, Miguel. Sir, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for organizing this. It's always a wonderful opportunity to meet colleagues and friends. Um, and we always think of the people who could not be here, uh, of course. Um, so issues of access are very important and they're amply discussed and I'm grateful for that. Um, I'm thinking of it a little more personally because today is, um, today happens to be the birthday of a dear friend of mine, Wei El Abbas, who is spending it in jail in Egypt. Um, Wei El is probably the godfather of the blogging community in Egypt and uh, he's unable to be here even though he is one of the people whom we celebrate. He's one of many people around the world, really, who are part of our community and whose presence and whose voices we, like, we love to hear and applaud. But uh, oftentimes, unfortunately, be they in Vietnam, in Rwanda, in Egypt, in Palestine, um, when they get in trouble, we, we tend to forget them. So I am allowing myself to remind you all to think of, of all the people like Wael Abbas, like Ala Abdel Fattah, like many others, who are part of our community and who cannot join us uh, because 
uh, they live in autocratic regimes. Um, and I urge you to remember the names and to think of it as, as individuals and not as mere numbers. So thank you for your time, thank you for, uh, for organizing this, and thank you for having us. Thank you. Anya, are we ready with the online? Go to the next Hola. and then. Hola. Voy a leer el comentario de Alfredo Velasco, de Usuarios Digitales, Ecuador. Queremos toda la Internet para todos, todo el tiempo. Una Internet libre, segura, abierta y neutra. Para eso, estos espacios deben renovarse. Tener mayor participación de todos y dar espacio a todos. Los gobiernos siguen siendo los grandes ausentes, tanto en los foros globales como en los foros nacionales NRI, y precisamente son ellos los llamados a participar aún más para hablar del elefante en el salón, hablar de que la seguridad no debe reñir con el ejercicio de los derechos. Gracias, es todo. Thank you. Sir, you have the floor. Hi, everyone. My name is Emin Hussainov. I'm from Azerbaijan. I'm a human rights activist, exile based now, unfortunately. Since from 2012, Azerbaijan hosted IGF, we are intensively attended and joined, and we believe to this idea for IGF make important role to promote internet freedoms, and especially we believe for if it's happened in Azerbaijan, it's some kind of chance to develop internet freedoms in our own state. Unfortunately, f uh, six years later, uh, all internet freedoms completely downgraded, and today I'm speaking here on behalf of the voices which is can't speak anymore for the bloggers which is killed in the prison. My colleague, like uh, Mehman Galandarov, I just tried to show his, he killed in the prison in 2017 in April and the government says well, he makes suicide by himself. And 45 days this person stayed without access to the lawyer. I'm speaking on behalf of another uh, friend of mine, Mehman Hussainov, which is my brother and chairman of our organization, Institute for Reported Freedom and Safety. He's exposed high-level corruptions, and since 2012, he's attended also closely to IGF as like civil society representative in Azerbaijan. And today, this person jailed for defamation charges, and he can't speak. He's even not able, since from 2012 until he's arrested in March 2017, five years, he's staying on the, like hostages in his own state. And today, these people need your solidarity. And if any of you, which is, I saw many friends here, if you want to join to our campaign for solidarity, because Mehman's birthday coming soon at 24th November, please, as like our friends, Rebecca McKenna and Christophe Delois from RSF joined to campaign. We are invited you to also support Mehman. And finally, I just tell you the reason why Mehman is in the prison. He is arrested because he exposed corruption and nepotism in my country and person which has put his to the jail according to her political will. This is First Lady of Azerbaijan, which is also Goodwill Ambassador of UNESCO. And we called to UNESCO, stopped her uh, Goodwill Ambassador mandate and don't give floor to authoritarian leaders to using this kind of important international units to promote and legitimize his autocratic regimes. Thank you very much for attention, sir. Thank you. Sir, you have the floor. Bonsoir, Madame la Présidente. Je m'appelle Kossi Yamesinou, je viens du Bénin. Je suis le vice-président du Forum sur la gouvernance de l'Internet au Bénin. Je voudrais faire deux propositions. La première est relative au nombre d'ateliers parallèles. Je note qu'il y a trop de similitudes entre les sujets abordés. On peut réduire encore les ateliers parallèles et avoir des ateliers qui ont une durée au-delà de 90 minutes pour permettre qu'il y ait beaucoup plus d'interactions et donner la chance aussi aux modérateurs de session, en fin de session, de pouvoir prendre 
deux à cinq minutes pour faire une synthèse sur les idées fortes à retenir au niveau des sessions. La deuxième idée est relative à la notion de gouvernance. Je retiens que de plus en plus, l'on remet en cause le mot gouvernance dans la définition du de, de forum sur la gouvernance de l'Internet. J'ai interrogé un peu la littérature, je me rends compte que ceux qui l'évoquent n'ont pas tout à fait tort que ça. Il y a même des difficultés d'interprétation de ce mot-là dans certaines langues. Et nous nous rendons compte aussi, en venant à l'IGF, que les sujets que nous abordons font beaucoup plus référence à la notion d'appropriation qu'à la notion de gouvernance. Il est souhaitable, et je le propose, que nous puissions remplacer, si les, si les Nations Unies en conviennent, le forum sur la gouvernance de l'Internet par le forum de l'appropriation de l'Internet, simplement. Merci. Thank you, Kosi. I'm going to have to close the queues now at the folks that are standing up in line to make sure we have time to go on to the community um, speakers as well. Of course, there's always a possibility to give your feedback online or um, catch us individually. <coughs> But let's continue going through the queue. So, Timea, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Lynn. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Timea Schütte. Um, I'm a MAG member from the private sector, just stepping into my second term. So, thank you for that. Um, and thank you for UNESCO um, and to France for, uh, for hosting the IGF uh, in Paris this year. We're really glad to be here. Um, I wanted to um, share with you three very short messages um, that stemmed from our workshop that ICC Basis organized um, yesterday uh, on the theme of artificial intelligence and um, the possibility uh, for it to enhance the connectivity opportunities for those living with disabilities in the world. Um, and we came away with three messages from the workshop um, to see what can be done um, to use emerging technologies to reap these possibilities um, for, for these people. And the workshop said that AI um, needs um, sharing of information and raising of awareness um, to enrich people's lives. Uh, we need public-private partnerships to ensure diffusion of technology, and we need holistic policy frameworks to support cross-cutting technical, social, cultural, economic, and governance issues. So I say we had this workshop on the promise of emerging technology for uh, people with disabilities, but if we asked just as the same, why are we coming to the IGF? What uh, are we doing here? What are we looking for from the IGF? I'm sure we would have gotten the same answers. We're coming here to share information and to hear information from our counterparts. We're here to build partnerships and we're here to find the right policy elements that can help us to reach the opportunities that technology has for the shared development goals that we have. So I'm looking forward um, to my next year in the MAG. I'm looking forward to the next IGF and the many more that will come afterwards. I'm looking forward to strengthening this multi-stakeholder model with my colleagues in the MAG and with you all who are participating in the IGF. See you in Berlin, I hope. Thank you, Tamea. I'm going to go to the next mic in a moment, but Anya, could you, I said it when I cut the queue and I said those people standing in line, obviously I also meant anybody that was in queue online as well. So if there's somebody that wants to come back in, they should because there was a, an online participant. And, um, sir, you have the floor. Thank you very much. I am Ali Viso from The Gambia, working in the civil society. Like I was in Mexico like 2016, then Gambia just had an election where we experienced internet shutdown. So some of the things that we suggested during that forum is how can the UNIGF involve stakeholders like the governments? Because most of the time when you come here, it's only mostly the host country's government representative at certain level that you find here. For instance, everyone is excited about Macron's speech and all those other things. I believe Africa should be represented more, especially at head of state level and ministers, because most of these countries the internet-related laws are almost non-existing. Governments have to use laws relating to that in prosecuting certain crimes. Like, for instance, in our country, we have a lot of issues when it comes to those things. Even though it's a young government with high promises and hopes that things will change. And another thing also is when it comes to the investment aspect of things. From where I come from, like the Gambia, internet data is very expensive and connectivity is an issue in many of the communities. 
and we're talking about an open internet and internet affordable internet for all. So I believe we need to get more investors involved, maybe through the UN offices in those member countries, in getting some of these things available for the population. And I believe the IGF should continue to push for most of these things because it's the only platform, like the general platform, that people can come and voice these concerns, even though we have regional IGF country level and other issues. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Sir, you have the floor. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Samuel Ose uh, from Ghana, and I'm CEO of NetBuzz Africa. Um, I want to first thank um, the organizers for this opportunity. Uh, it's my first as a youth uh, IGF. The many sessions I attended uh, this year, um, they tackled a lot of the sessions that I actually wanted to listen to. But however, my focus on digital inclusion and jobs for the youth uh, still remains a problem that I didn't really get to understand what uh, everyone was talking about. Um, I believe in our quest to provide mentorship for ambassadors paving way uh, for the youth in digital job creation. We can also consider how these ambassadors don't end up solving social issues um, with digital technologies only, but also contribute to sustaining their ideas beyond the internet. Uh, for most of the promising idea talks I had this year, I see a one-sided uh, conversation that's trying to connect people online while excluding them from um, normal life activities. So for instance, you own um, a work online, but Technically, people in your community don't even know you, so how is uh, the IGF body trying to empower the ambassadors to do more beyond the internet? Also, I believe if we continue to empower these uh, thousands of people with digital skills, but fail to help them create um, an, a sustainable job that is still online, I believe our quest to create uh, digital jobs will only be still limited to the internet. And so the IGF governing body can make plans to properly help ambassadors to create sustaining jobs that um, instead of preaching digital inclusions as a means of establishing digital jobs, we can actually preach how people can create lasting jobs for not just the youth, but people also coming after us. Thank you. Thank you. And sir, you have the floor. Oh yeah, okay, thank you. Hi, my name is Hans Klein, I'm from Georgia Tech. I wanna thank France for the hosting of this lovely event. Uh, and I wanna to return in my comments to the role of the state of governments in internet governance. In an early, ex earlier exchange of ideas in this hall, I expressed some concern about the role of the state, and it, my comments got a response that the state can solve problems of the internet, and that is, I think, certainly true. There are important issues that can be addressed, issues like cross-border cyber warfare, issues like the online radicalization of youth. But I hasten to add that the source of many of these problems, there may be solutions offered by states, but the source of many of the problems often lies with states and governments as well, particularly in the geopolitical international relations of states that create problems. Uh, that perhaps states can later solve only after they've created them. So we find, uh, why do we have cross-border cyber warfare today? A major reason is because of yesterday's uh, international politics, particularly the expansion of NATO, and we're seeing the start of a new Cold War. There's a lot of talk about that. So an earlier strategy of, of uh, conflict has generated cyber warfare and cyber attacks, which we now struggle to solve but perhaps the best solution to solve the problems is not to provoke them in the first place. Likewise, why do we have online radicalization of youth, particularly uh, Islamic radicalization? And again, we find here, if we look back a few years, that the cause lies significantly with state action and the various wars in the Middle East that destabilize countries, uh, Iraq, Syria, uh, Libya, and so on. And again, online radicalization lies with actions like those, and it was state action. So as we consider new models of internet governance, I repeat, let us be wary of states that bring a certain logic of international relations to governance. It may be the internet stability and security are better served by multi-stakeholderism uh, and not by states and geopolitics. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Anya, was there an, someone online? So, 
Voy a leer un comentario de Karina Virarda de Internet Society Cybersecurity. Muchas gracias, IGF, un año más participando de manera remota, representando a la comunidad técnica de Internet Society Cybersecurity. Unidos por una, por una Internet neutral, libre y segura para todos. Es necesaria la participación múltiple, stakeholder, para un conocimiento y concienciación de los temas tan importantes que se tratan durante los IGF nacionales, regionales y, como cumbre, el IGF internacional. Gracias. Thank you. You have the floor. Hello, everybody. My name is Rebecca Crosby, and I represent um, the faith-based community. Um, so my background is that 20 years ago, I worked in a sub-Saharan country, developing country, and the humiliating part of that was every fortnight trudging eight hours to the city, literally spending another eight, nine hours knocking on anybody's doors, uh, international banks, international hotels, multinational companies, anybody that would let us use their communications to reach back home and to get messages and important things out. And uh, obviously, um, I was in the position, I was privileged, I had the finance and the backing um, to be able to pay for that. And so uh, once I even paid a, year's, a national's year's salary for three minutes internet access, and I wasted a minute of that crying with all the frustration. Um, now, obviously, that's developed and things have changed over time. Um, but I think the issue for me is that is that we need to see that equality in place. And uh, we've heard about the policies, we've heard about sharing information, but I am very grateful, this is my first IGF, and I'm very grateful, not just for the sharing of ideas, but for the sharing of um, the fact that it needs to be a human right to have that access. But it's no good having the access if the infrastructure's not there. Um, I heard last week of a, 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 an African millionaire who flew his children to uh, European hospitals and lived in a mansion and had lots of staff, and he was found recently dead, face down in the dirt, uh, on the side of the road, with his mobile phone in his hand, and he was looking up uh, symptoms of a heart attack, and there was no internet connection, and he died. So what's the point of having the resources if the infrastructure is not in place? I, I, I'm really excited about beautiful pearls, but I'd much more be excited about the farming implements of that where it's accessible to all. So thank you. Thank you. Access is a, is a very core concern of, of our activities here. Susan? Um, and thank you to our French hosts to UNESCO, to the UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs, and to Chingatai and his team at the IG... Sorry, this microphone's really low. I'm just going to take it off. There we go. Um, and uh, Lynn, to you for uh, having produced a tremendous 13th annual Internet Governance Forum. The United States supports the multi-stakeholder approach and as such, the United States supports the IGF. Discussions and deliberations in multi-stakeholder fora are enriched by the perspectives of different stakeholders, and collaboration between different stakeholders is necessary to make the internet work. It is in multi-stakeholder institutions, not multilateral ones, where internet governance questions are best addressed. The success of the internet depends on finding consensus amongst stakeholders, not on votes by governments. We will meet a year from now in Berlin for the 14th IGF. With 13 years of experience to build on, the multi-stakeholder advisory group and the IGF community has the data it needs to create a more relevant IGF to some stakeholder groups, namely governments. We need to thread the needle between an IGF that is more relevant to government and an IGF that produces outputs, the development of which cannot involve negotiations or trade-offs because that's not the spirit of the IGF. I am sure that we can thread that needle through discussions and outreach over the coming year, and in particular because we have the stability and support provided by the German government in advance. 
the spirit of the IGF is collaboration between and amongst all stakeholders through transparent processes and with input provided from the bottom up by the community. NTIA, the National Telecommunications and Information Administration, is eager to work with the IGF community towards a vibrant 14th annual IGF in Berlin, Germany. Thank you. Thank you. You have the floor. Thank you. My name is Mira Salamela, and I am an activist from Finland. And in a very Finnish way, I'll go straight to the point. And uh, I, I do believe that we all want a safer internet for ourselves and for our children. And I don't think this can be achieved through more surveillance, fear mongering and restrictions. I believe that information and understanding are the answer. Uh, technology is advancing rapidly and people are using it intuitively. Education is not keeping up, and people aren't being taught how to use the internet safely and how to protect themselves and their children from predators and how to take care of their mental health in the environment that can at times be depressing or hostile. I think schools all over the world should take this role of education to prevent cyberbullying and to teach kids to use social media and the rest of the internet responsibly and safely. Because uh, the internet is a great cornucopia of information and social networks and art and other things. And I think the theme internet, internet of trust means a freer global internet where we remember that internet is not just made of technology but other human beings using it. Thank you. And you have the floor. It, it should be fine. Let me go to the queue over here, Mark, then. And if somebody could check the mic on this side of the room. The Mark, you have the floor. Hey, Lynn, thank you very much. Uh, Mark Carvel, United Kingdom Government, Department for Digital Culture, Media and Sport. Hello, everybody. Um, first of all, uh, thanks uh, as the UK government to the French government for hosting this year's uh, IGF. Special thanks to David Martinon, he's not there, but uh, <laughs> at the moment, to, uh, for, his, for driving this forward with such uh, verve and uh, and energy and uh, inimitable style, I have to say. That's been great, and thanks to the steering committee as a whole and to the secretariat, Cengatai, uh, and uh, to the MAG uh, for all their hard work in developing the program and, and setting the, up this event, and also steering forward the intercessional work, which is uh, a critical uh, aspect of the ITF's work now. It's not a single event, it's, it's, it's uh, throughout the year thanks to a lot of effort. Uh, and despite shortage of resources, and I'll come on to that in a minute. First of all, I, secondly, I want to say that um, this year we had the largest number of UK government policy experts at an IGF. It was about 20 from, from uh, across our government, not only my ministry, but other ministries as well. Uh, and also we had uh, experts from our independent regulator, Ofcom, here. So that reflects the, the criticality of the IGF program that was constructed this year, that our policymakers felt that it was important to be here, to engage with uh, stakeholders, experts from other constituencies, private sector, technical community, civil society, and so on. And I hope very much more governments will understand the importance of being here and, and allow their policymakers the time to make it to the IGF and participate in and discussions and hear from other stakeholders uh, so that our policy development as, as government policy leads is enhanced and, and enriched. The UK government also uh, appreciates very much the work of the MAG 
in implementing the recommendations of the Commission of Science and Technology for Development for improving the IGF and also the outcomes of the UN retreat in 2016 and also the proposals that come out of the annual stock taking. That's a lot of uh, you know, reaction and thoughts and ideas and proposals to, to digest and the MAG is now looking at that, I know, with a lot of energy, with working groups set up and so on. And we very much hope that that work continues uh, with uh, focus and direction in order to make the next uh, IGF, the 14th one in, in Berlin, even more successful than this one. And our deep appreciation to the German government uh, for hosting uh, the IGF next year. And also very much endorse your message, uh, Lynn, to other governments uh, to look at the possibility of hosting the IGF. It does need to move around through the continents. We've been in Europe uh, twice and we will be in Europe again next year. We've got to move this uh, forum at the heart of the internet ecosystem around through the world. So very much endorse that message. And finally, another message to governments, that is to step forward, to the, step up to the plate, that is the UN Trust Fund that finances all of this. Without those donations, this wouldn't happen. UK government has been an annual contributor to the UN Trust Fund ever since the IGF has started. We're going to up our contribution, in fact. So uh, I hope that's uh, welcome news. Uh, but there's not enough. Thank you. <laughs> but but you, this needs more money, especially with all the extremely important intercessional work that's being undertaken. That matrix of activity contributes to tangible outcomes. It needs secretariat support. I looked at Anya in particular, who's done an enormous amount of work on the intercessional side. You, Anya, need help. So very much endorse your message to governments, but also to the private sector. This needs money. So I hope very much uh, you, uh, the message will uh, resonate. We'll do our best as UK government to communicate that across our uh, networks of, of government contacts. I've gone over considerably. Sorry about that. Thank you. Considerably, but it would have been quite silly to cut you off in the middle of making a plea for more, more support and resources. Thank you for your patience. You have the floor. Bonjour. Je m'appelle Benita Izeminga et je suis de la République démocratique du Congo, chargée de projet au sein de Numérique 243 qui milite en faveur de l'inclusion numérique au sein de la communauté africaine. Avant mon premier euh, IGF, je ne savais pas que l'accès à l'Internet était un droit et que surtout c'était aussi... Euh, ça, ça faisait partie des droits humains. Mon pays est membre euh, des Nations Unies, de l'UNESCO, et euh, dans les pays africains, l'Internet est vendu très cher à la population. Alors, sachant cela, je fais appel à ce forum À, à la nation, aux Nations Unies et à l'UNESCO de se pencher davantage sur les mesures à prendre face aux coupures, euh, coupures d'Internet générales que nous sommes en train de subir et surtout à la prise en otage de notre droit à l'accès à, à Internet, droit à la liberté d'expression et de l'information. Merci. Merci beaucoup. You have the floor. Okay. Okay. Bonsoir à tout le monde. Je réponds. Uh, avant tout, je remercie uh, Madame la Présidente, je remercie uh, AFNIC, je remercie aussi Shangatai et toute l'équipe, et merci à la France aussi et à l'UNESCO. Uh, je réponds au nom d'Abdeljiril Bacharbon, donc je suis le secrétaire exécutif du Forum sur la gouvernance de l'Internet au Tchad. Et merci pour, uh, pour cette opportunité. Donc j'ai quelques recommandations et quelques suggestions. Donc concernant les NRI, le NRI joue un rôle vraiment primordial pour, euh, dans le cadre de, du forum sur la gouvernance de l'Internet. Donc nous, en tant que secrétaire exécutif du Tchad, nous souhaitons un mécanisme de financement durable, que ce soit pour les NRI, pour l'organisation de leur forum, que ce soit leur participation à ce forum. Et surtout, comme il y a une fenêtre euh, de UN Trust Fund, Donc on peut utiliser cette fenêtre à loi un montant pour, pour cela. Euh, 
puisque IGFSI fait un, euh, un travail formidable que nous souhaitons les remercier, parce que via leur financement, on arrive à organiser euh, euh, nos IGF, en plus avec euh, la mobilisation des ressources en local. Et aussi, euh, surtout, euh, la place de la jeunesse au niveau du forum sur la gouvernance de l'Internet. On a, on a déjà parlé, même j'avais fait une intervention lors de IGF Mexico, on a parlé de, de la place de la jeunesse dans la gouvernance de l'Internet, parce que nous avons besoin de jeunes. Sans jeunes, il euh, n'y a pas les leaders de futur. Donc c'est vrai, Aizoc est en train de faire un, un programme formidable, euh, les ambassadeurs, les next gen. Donc nous sollicitons au niveau du MAC aussi, pourquoi pas au niveau de IGF en tant que tel, créer un petit programme de sensibilisation, même si c'est amener deux, trois, quatre jeunes d'y participer. Et surtout euh, les jeunes, les écoliers, etc. Et aussi la participation de la communauté locale. Ici, par exemple, si on organise IGF en France, aujourd'hui, on doit avoir plus des étudiants qui, font, qui ont des relations plus avec la gouvernance de l'Internet. Et concernant les workshops, parce que quand vous allez dans le site de IGF, les workshops, il faut postuler en anglais, toujours en anglais, les résumés en anglais, tout est en anglais. Et comme maintenant, euh, vous avez dit, la diversité linguistique exige, donc il fallait que les workshops, on peut postuler dans la langue des Nations Unies, c'est vraiment primordial aussi. Et la recommandation concernant la restauration au niveau de IGF, c'est primordial aussi. Donc il faut voir des mécanismes pour avoir la restauration gratuite aussi. Et aussi, euh, j'adhère à l'idée de lancer les débats sur les changements de nos IGF, parce que pour ne pas avoir de confusion. Et euh, dernier point, je remercie aussi le secrétariat d'IGF, parce qu'Anja a fait un travail formidable. Donc il faut plus de ressources humaines au sein du secrétariat et beaucoup plus d'appui technique et financier aussi. Je vous remercie. Thank you. You have the floor. You've all been very patient the last few here, so we're entering the, the end. You have the floor. Bonjour à tous. Hello everyone. My name is Camille Latham and I am currently doing research at the University of Bath in the UK. Um, so I've heard a lot of people talking about, you know, accessibility, making sure different groups are represented. But it's important to point out that we still all belong to one community, which is a community which is lucky enough to know about the existence of the Internet Governance Forum, but also a community which is still well acquainted to concepts linked to Internet Governance. Um, I've also heard a lot of criticism about you know, the absence of concrete results, um, and I think that a lot of people tend to forget the fact that beyond, you know, the absence of concrete results in form of like papers or whatnot. The IGF is a place to discuss different topics and also to listen. It's a place where we exchange ideas, where people can plant seeds which actually grow into, into thoughts and then impact. Um, and so I think it's really important to maybe think about broadening the outreach of the IGF um, including different interest groups which do not necessarily talk about internet governance on a daily basis, don't know about internet governance, um, and also reach out to expert groups. Um, I think that the inclusion, I don't know, of, of professors would be really interesting in different talks. The inclusion of lawyers and all these people who don't know about the, the, the existence of the IGF, but could actually contribute actively um, through listening and actually bring back these ideas that we're talking about, bring them back to their communities. Um, and they could also potentially um, you know, participate and comment on, on issues and bring about new thoughts which haven't yet been approached because we're part of this you know, very same group. Um, so there you have it. Thank you very much. Thank you. As the Secretary General said, philosophers and social scientists, political scientists, um, I think everybody would very much welcome um, a, a broader and deeper engagement. Sir, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, so I'm Ethan Sweet. I'm from the United Kingdom, and I'm here on the Internet Society Youth at IGF program. Uh, this is my first ever IGF, and since coming here and before, when I was learning about this, uh, the IGF is a place of dialogue between all stakeholders um, and so it was um, particularly disappointing that yesterday um, due to room allocations 
we were physically unable to fit all stakeholders in the room. Um, this was particularly at two events I went to. It was at the Artificial Intelligence Ethics um, event, and it was the one that I was my backup, which was the uh, inter event that looked at internet governance in general in Hall 3. I can't remember the full title. Sorry, I didn't write it down. Um, so how we should really, sorry, we should really be looking at how we um, allocate these screens, perhaps even asking participants who pre-register, not in any binding way, but ask them what events they're going to attend so that we can look at what rooms we put them in so that quite literally everyone has a seat at the table. Um, and so the other thing I want to cover about this in dialogue, since I've got 53 seconds left, is um, participation of people in, in the room. Um, this seems to be really wildly varied between events. Some events I found um, will open the floor up about halfway in. Some events did not open the floor at all, which was really disappointing, I found. Um, so, I, as well, we should also look at being lot, a lot stronger on pushing back, maybe, in some events, how much the panel speaks and how much stakeholders can speak, because I don't know about the rest of you, but I didn't come here for listening to a lot of talking heads. I could have done that online. Thank you. Thank you. Um, sir, you're the, the last speaker, and we closed the queue about a half hour ago, and we're significantly over time. Um, thank you. Thank you very much for accommodating the rest of the, the speakers. Hello, you have the floor. Hola, bonjour. My name is Peter Tonoli. I'm from Electronic Frontiers, Australia. Firstly, my deepest gratitude to the UN and French Republic for organising and hosting this event and the massive logistics behind it. It is my first IGF, so please forgive my somewhat guileless comments. After many interactions here at the IGF, I've never felt so small in a large world. Yet I'm happy to be a small player, as we are now all global citizens. Firstly, we need to be cognizant that one of the objectives that we all agree on is that we want an open internet. And the question that comes to mind after hearing President Macron's speech was can we retain an open internet while instituting regulations and norms that have come up repeatedly over the past three days? Is there a fine line between sovereignty, regulation, and keeping the internet open and allowing innovation? And instead of increasing regulation, we can have an opportunity to empower citizens instead why should we, or why would we, have to regulate against fake news when we can empower <laughs> citizens <laughs> to critically analyse the media instead? The title of this internet, of this IGF, is Internet of Trust, and citizens will be required to increasingly trust governments and organisations like the UN due to the proposals for additional regulation. Citizens need a re reason to trust governments, and governments need to garner that trust. The mass surveillance machinery of governments, such as Five Eyes, DGSI, and FSGB, needs to stop to engender that trust. Similar comments by my colleague from Georgia Tech. A significant amount of the problems that we have today, and we're discussing today, have actually been caused by states themselves. With examples of the election of Trump in the US, the rise of right-wing involvement in government, and ever-increasing nationalism, we must persevere with multi-stakeholder and civil society involvement and cannot require re rely on government and the UN alone. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that finishes our stock-taking session. Both um, Ambassador Martino and I will have a few closing remarks in, uh, in a little while. Um, I want to just to reassure everybody that we've taken notes, and of course it's transcribed and streamed, and we'll be taken back into the MAG, into the community, and, and into the working groups for, for further action. Um, the engagement from our side was relatively little, only so we could prioritize hearing from the, from the community. But, but please, I really want you to understand that it's been well noted, and we'll, we'll take them forward. So I'll turn it back to Changatai to lead us to the rest of the agenda. Right. Uh, thank you very much, Lynn. Uh, yes, I just want to echo what Lynn has said. Uh, we've got the notes and we'll keep it in the forefront of our mind as we go on to um, IGF 2019 meeting. Um, 
So, so now we come to the last section of um, this closing session, and we're now to the reflections, closing reflections. I would first of all like to invite Minister Munir Majubi, um, the D Digital Affairs Minister, France. Sorry. Thank you. Excellence, Mesdames et Messieurs, bonsoir, bienvenue, merci à tous, merci à tous d'avoir passé ces quelques jours à Paris, merci à tous d'avoir pu euh, ces dernières heures débattre, échanger. Je suis honoré, très honoré de clôturer avec vous ce soir cette première édition parisienne de l'Internet Governance Forum. J'en suis d'autant plus honoré que vous avez pu assister hier à un événement mémorable. Cet événement, c'est le nouveau souffle que nous avons tous donné ici à l'idée de ce que pouvait être la gouvernance de l'Internet, un nouveau regard sur la gouvernance de l'Internet, une gouvernance juste, une gouvernance efficace et une gouvernance qui donne confiance aux citoyens. Cette ambition, le président Emmanuel Macron l'a rappelé avec force lors de son intervention, ici, lundi, devant près de 4000 personnes. Cette conviction, elle a résonné dans ses murs, mais bien au-delà. Et nous en avons discuté ensemble avec certains d'entre vous, certains sont intervenus depuis. Parfois, nous avons débattu avec passion. Alors parce que nous savons tous que les choix que nous ferons aujourd'hui en matière de gouvernance seront décisifs pour l'Internet de demain, parce que nous savons tous, et certains d'entre vous plus que d'autres, que ce... et que nous sommes convaincus que l'absence d'action des gouvernements n'est plus une option. Alors face aux défis de ces sociétés, face aux défis auxquels nous sommes tous confrontés, et à l'heure de la maturité du numérique, il est venu le temps d'agir. Cette action, elle doit reposer sur deux ambitions essentielles qui ont été exposées par le président de la République pour la gouvernance de l'Internet. La première, c'est la volonté d'une régulation intelligente, et votre dernière intervention était très intéressante, c'est évidemment cette fine ligne qu'il s'agit de, trou qu de trouver. Et la seconde, c'est ce sujet très important du multilatéralisme ouvert, et j'y reviendrai. Vous le savez, le président de la République l'a rappelé, la France défend une conception innovante de la régulation. La volonté de régulation que nous avons affirmée, ce n'est pas une régulation à l'ancienne, une régulation d'hier avec les vieilles recettes. Il ne faut pas y lire des contraintes. Cette régulation, ce n'est pas le laisser faire. Cette régulation, ce n'est pas non plus la contrainte indiscriminée, aveugle, qui paralyserait tous les acteurs qui nuirait aux utilisateurs et qui empêcherait un Internet ouvert, comme vous l'avez rappelé. La régulation que la France propose, c'est une nouvelle régulation basée sur des objectifs, des valeurs, et c'est une voie européenne qu'il s'agit pour nous de construire, de définir. C'est tout le sens de la signature de la France du Contract for the Web qui a été proposé par Tim Berners-Lee. La France a été le premier pays à rejoindre cette initiative à l'occasion du Web Summit à Lisbonne. C'est aussi le sens de l'initiative Tech for Good que nous avions lancée il y a près de six mois et qui vise à mobiliser tous les acteurs du numérique autour d'objectifs d'intérêt général. Alors, au service de ces objectifs, nous, nous assumons la régulation parce que cette régulation, ces objectifs d'intérêt général, ils sont une aspiration de nos populations, de nos citoyens. Mais nous prenons une régulation intelligente. Celle que nous proposons elle est basée sur la responsabilisation des acteurs et sur la responsabilisation et l'engagement des régulateurs. Elle se fonde à la fois sur une transparence accrue sur les moyens, une transparence qui aujourd'hui fait cruellement défaut. Et elle permet d'innover dans les instruments qui sont mobilisés pourvu qu'ils soient au service des objectifs fixés. Elle associe toutes les parties prenantes ensemble, notamment et surtout la société civile, à la définition de ces objectifs. Cette régulation, elle est aujourd'hui souhaitée par une majorité d'acteurs, en Europe et dans le reste du monde. Mais cette régulation, c'est aussi le choix de la responsabilité. Parce que le laisser-faire a été l'option privilégiée jusqu'ici, et que ce laisser-faire montre aujourd'hui toutes ses limites et qu'il nous est reproché par tous les citoyens. Et parce que la réglementation inadéquate la sanction excessive qui conduit les acteurs à des comportements de surapplication, de surinterprétation des règles et qu'elles ne constituent pas non plus une option viable en matière d'innovation et en matière démocratique. 
Il nous revient donc ensemble d'identifier cette troisième voie praticable. Alors l'une des priorités qui a été posée par le président de la République, c'est la lutte contre le discours de haine, les discours racistes, les discours antisémites et bien sûr contre les contenus illicites. La neutralité, elle est absolument nécessaire et fondamentale au niveau des réseaux, mais elle ne doit pas entraîner nécessairement une indifférenciation quant au contenu. La France a toujours été un soutien de la neutralité du net, mais cela ne nous empêche pas de peser sur le sujet des contenus. Et c'est là que le, si l'on se met d'accord sur la nécessité d'avancer sur ce sujet, il faut que l'on soit capable, dans cette démarche, de repenser le multilatéralisme appliqué à ces sujets. Si on se met d'accord sur l'objectif d'une meilleure régulation, il faut se donner les moyens pour y arriver. Le fonctionnement actuel de l'IGF repose sur l'association de l'ensemble de la communauté. Et cette association, elle est fondamentale, elle est le cœur de ce qu'est l'IGF, mais je dirais même qu'elle est le cœur de ce qu'est Internet. L'implication de la société civile, du secteur privé, c'est ce qui assure que la réflexion qui est menée ici est en phase avec les promesses de la technologie, avec à la fois les capacités des entreprises du numérique et surtout d'être certain qu'elle résonne avec l'ensemble des causes et des ambitions qui sont portées par les acteurs de l'innovation numérique. Cette association des parties prenantes, cette dimension multipartite de l'IGF, la France compte plus que jamais la soutenir, compte plus que jamais la soutenir pour trouver des réponses aux défis structurants auxquels nous devons aujourd'hui encore répondre. Alors c'est dans cette démarche d'ouverture que nous avons soutenu hier l'appel de Paris pour la confiance et la sécurité dans le cyberespace, qui doit permettre de renforcer la coopération internationale et notre capacité collective à prévenir les attaques les plus déstabilisatrices. C'est avec cette ambition que j'ai signé hier l'initiative pour une démocratie durable qui doit nous permettre de mettre l'innovation technologique au service de la participation citoyenne et de la modernisation de nos démocraties dans le fonctionnement quotidien. Pour autant, si nous voulons bâtir des règles et si nous voulons les adopter ensemble, il faut que les États, qui demeurent les seules entités souveraines, puissent se mettre autour de la table et puissent les adopter. Et cela, ça implique en complémentarité de la réflexion menée par les différentes parties prenantes, de renforcer la dimension multilatérale de l'IGF. C'est tout le sens de la proposition exprimée par le président de la République. Cette envie, ce besoin de multilatéralisme, ce n'est pas juste une vision française ou une vision européenne, c'est aujourd'hui une vision, une aspiration portée par de nombreux États à travers le monde, qui se sentent aujourd'hui dépossédés d'une part de leur souveraineté face à ces défis numériques et qui d'autres reçoivent la pression de leur population face à toutes ces transformations qui inquiètent. Alors parce qu'aujourd'hui, Internet est une réalité avec des enjeux pour les citoyens du monde entier et que leur gouvernement qui incarne leurs inspirations, eh bien, il faut que nous soyons capables d'entendre leur voix et il faut qu'avec leur engagement, nos engagements, nous puissions ensemble construire cet avenir. Alors nous avons lancé en France, en juillet dernier, des états généraux qui visent à consulter l'ensemble des acteurs sur les défis immenses auxquels nous sommes confrontés aujourd'hui en matière de numérique. La raison pour laquelle nous les avons lancés, ces états généraux, c'est que nous voulions donner à la France une voix. Une voix pour décider nationalement, mais une voix aussi pour décider au niveau européen et au niveau international quelles seraient nos positions. Et cela, nous l'avons construit. Il nous a permis de construire cet agenda français. Et dans les prochains mois, ce que nous souhaitons, ce que le président de la République a rappelé encore, c'est comment construire ensemble cet agenda européen avec ce Parlement nouveau qui arrivera d'ici quelques mois, quel agenda européen avec cette nouvelle commission, mais quel agenda mondial nous porterons ici à l'IGF et quel agenda mondial nous porterons face à tous les défis qui nous attendent. Alors ne perdons pas de vue ce cap international, il y a différentes opportunités de discussion à venir, il y a le G7, le prochain G20, l'IGF de l'année prochaine et je tiens à remercier très fort nos collègues allemands qui hébergeront l'année prochaine euh, la, 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 cet IGF réinventé, cet IGF nouveau, cet IGF engagé, un IGF encore plus multipartite, un IGF encore plus multilatéral, un IGF encore plus important. Si vous deviez retenir une seule conviction de ce que je vous ai dit ce soir, c'est la confiance absolue que nous portons dans l'IGF et la volonté que nous avons d'en faire 
un véritable objet de discussion, un véritable objet de pouvoir dans lequel des décisions pourront être prises. Et pour cela, il faut qu'on prenne tous notre responsabilité d'acteur. Et dans cette responsabilité, eh bien, il y a beaucoup de travail, beaucoup de sueur, mais aussi la chance, la possibilité de voir devant nous se transformer cette gouvernance pour aller dans un sens que certains d'entre vous ont souhaité depuis parfois des décennies. Je vous remercie à toutes et à tous. Thank you very much, Minister. Uh, we will now go to our community representatives selected by the MAG uh, to say a few words. Pardon? Oh, point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the first speaker is uh, Ms. Noah Ashraf Abdel Baki from the Digital Grassroots Organization and Youth Capacity Building Volunteer Program. Bonsoir, mesdames et messieurs. Je m'appelle Noha, N-O-H-A, Abdelbaki. Je suis égyptienne. Je suis ambassadrice d'Internet Society du Forum de la gouvernance Internet et cofondatrice de Digital Grassroots, une initiative de jeunes dans la gouvernance Internet. Je suis très honorée d'être ici pour représenter la voix de, de la jeunesse dans cette cérémonie de clôture du FGI en 2018. L'Internet de confiance, thème de cette année, et l'Internet où tout le monde est représenté, y compris les jeunes, les femmes, les personnes handicapées et d'autres groupes marginalisés. Les jeunes en particulier, les jeunes femmes, sont souvent confrontés à des défis dans les espaces de gouvernance d'Internet dominés par les hommes. Il existe un gros besoin de créer des espaces en ligne et hors ligne, sur et ouverts, pour un dialogue inclusif entre les jeunes et toutes les parties prenantes. Digital Grassroots est une initiative dirigée par les jeunes. L'initiative est née lors du FGI 2017 à Genève par l'intermédiaire des Internet Society Youth at IGF Fellows, originaire de dix pays différents. En moins d'un an, nous avons formé des jeunes dans plus de 40 pays tant en anglais et français, sur les le principaux de la citoyenneté numérique, et nous leur avons fourni des conseils sur la manière de contribuer et participer efficacement au niveau de leur communauté locale et de, dans des autres sphères de la gouvernance Internet. Aussi, grâce à la collaboration avec des différents acteurs, comme les chapitres d'Internet Society, un iLab du secteur privé et Internet et tout de la, de la société civile, nous avons organisé des événements dans différents pays comme le Kenya, la Tanzanie, la, le Nigeria, l'Afrique du Sud et la Zambie pour diffuser notre vision. Les cofondateurs et amb les ambassadeurs ont, par ont participé à différents forums nationaux et régionaux sur la gouvernance Internet, les écoles de, sur la gouvernance Internet et d'autres événements dans le domaine. En définitive, nous euh, remarquons euh, que des réalisations concrètes sont, eff sont effectuées lorsque la participation des jeunes au FGI est effective. Les jeunes apportent des perspectives différentes et proposent des solutions créatives et innovantes. En tant que jeunes, nous nous sommes unis pour, exp pour exprimer notre préoccupation devant le faible nombre d'ateliers acceptés. Nous nous sommes unis pour exprimer notre préoccupation devant le faible nombre d'ateliers acceptés sur le thème « Jeunesse et genre » en 2018, ainsi que le faible nombre de participants. Nous avons fait une pétition adressée à la communauté du FGI pour augmenter la participation des jeunes au FGI. 
Tout le monde est invité à signer cette pétition pour me meilleure prise en compte de nos euh, préoccupations. Nous suggérons l'intégration des jeunes experts euh, euh, dès les premières étapes de la préparation du FGI et de les, de les impliquer dans la conception et la sélection des ateliers. Nous, nous, nous sommes également préoccupés par le manque de programmes comme ceux d'Internet Society qui sont, qui sont ouverts à la jeunesse de partout de, dans le monde. Euh, pour les FGI à Berlin, à Berlin, nous espérons avoir une euh, augmentation du nombre de bourses offertes et de participation des jeunes dans les panels. En fait, pour terminer, euh, je cite un de mes collègues qui déclare à sa 13e édition, le FGI a franchi à l'âge d'adolescence. De, de ce fait, euh, les jeunes sont donc les principaux, euh, les principaux acteurs de la réforme et du remodelage, car il s'agit de l'un des rares espèces de dialogue multipartite disponible dans lequel nous avons la possibilité de participer. Um, merci pour votre attention. Thank you for listening. Shukran Thank you. Thank you very much, Noa. Our next speaker is Ms. Lise Fur, Director General of the European Telecommunications Network Operators Association, ETNO. Your Excellencies, distinguished stakeholder representatives, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, bonjour. Unfortunately, my French is not good enough, so I'll uh, speak in, uh, in English. I'm the Director General of, European, uh, of the European Telecommunication Network Operators Associations, and I'm representing here today the private sector as a member of ICC basis, of ICC Business Action to Support the Information Society, or BASIS, which many of you know is the global business focal point for constructive engagement on WISIS and IGF. We came to Paris this year for the 13th Internet Governance Forum under the theme Internet of Trust. Discussions over the last three days have underscored strong private sector commitment to build trust in both the internet and in information and communication te technologies. Business takes this responsibility seriously, not only because it's a sound business case to ensure users of ICTs feel secure when using them, but also to strengthen and broaden the multi-stakeholder participation. Inputs from multiple stakeholders cultivate a shared understanding of the issues at hand and ignites a desire and willingness to address them collaboratively. This approach circles around to promote trust among the full range of stakeholders represented here today at IGF. Businesses comes to IGF here because we believe in the value of this multi-stakeholder model of internet governance. Gathering at the forum this year, all stakeholders can be assured of an open, frank and informed conversation, which is invaluable for all our consideration on how to establish trusted policy frameworks for ICT and also how to make sure policy environments are conducive to continued and sustainable investments in ICTs and innovation. To create an, an enabling environment, we have identified three fundamental pillars. Firstly, we must ensure all interoperable and seamless ICT ecosystems by ensuring infrastructure applications and services are all in place with full support for user engagement. Secondly, we need to ensure holistic policy approaches by considering the full range of policy issues and options, including economic, 
societal and cultural, technical and governance-related issues. And finally, we must encourage the participation of all relevant stakeholders in policy-making processes. Each stakeholder community will leave the IGF today with a better understanding of all the needs and the ideas of others. This open environment and participation of all stakeholders, including businesses, included civil society, and including technical community, is the best way to provide governments with the 360 degrees information that develops a fuller understanding of the issues and appropriate policy options they should consider. So it's essential to preserve the IGF's fundamental character as a bottom-up, all-inclusive, multi-stakeholder mechanism for participation. The IGF has served successfully as a laboratory for the exchange, discussion, and dissemination of best practices, technical expertise, and capacity building initiatives among all stakeholders. And it's this flexibility, transparency, and inclusiveness of the IGF's multi-stakeholder model that has enabled the internet to flourish as a platform for innovation and economic development that we have come to know. It has also advanced the WISIS goal to expand, to expand it con connectivity and inclusiveness. So, it is imperative that this model is retained going forward. We do not come here to negotiate, but you would be wrong to believe that our discussions is in this forum do not result in actions and projects. Businesses come to build partnerships with civil society, with governments, and also across industries. Just one example is Microsoft's Airband Initiative. This global initiative is helping to bridge digital divides by providing TV white space devices and other low-cost wireless technologies, contributing affordable broadband access to rural communities all around the world, from the U.S. countries to Latin America, Africa, Asia, and Europe. This project was sparked at the 2011 IGF meeting in Nairobi, where an early demo and a discussion led to our first trial in a remote village in Nanyuki, also in Kenya. Today, the initiative has seen partnership with local communities, technology providers, and governments in commercial deployments and pilots connecting the unconnected in over 30 countries around the world. Another example is Telefonica's Internet para todos, Internet for All, which was inspired by the intercessional work on connecting the next billion within IGF, and it aims to expand connectivity in remote areas. Our projects are unique, but their roots are not. There are multitudes of projects that had their beginnings at an IGF we urge you to share them widely. Only by capturing and promoting the discussions we have here, we can illustrate and communicate tangible IGF results. In this regard, private sector members on the MAC have also put forward a number of proposals on how to improve the marketing and advertising of the existing IGF work. And the IGF does not end here. We need to ensure that the IGF circle and the work undertaken throughout the year leading up to all these discussions is both clear and accessible to all who wish to contribute. With this in mind, the private sector is leading an initiative in the MAC to visualize and promote the IGF program framework. We are seeking your views and input on how to make the most of this. Ladies and gentlemen, the business community is your committed partner to build trust in and by way of the multi-stakeholder model. 
This is the true nature of IGF, which we value. We look forward to building on our work here at this unique forum to build an inclusive, sustainable, and people-centered internet as a means to attaining the WISA's vision and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and its 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Fur. I'll call upon the next speaker for the technical community, Mr. Sumon Ahmed Sabir, CTO of Fiber at Home. Uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you very much to the technical community for giving me the opportunity to talk here on behalf of the technical community and uh, at the third year of MAG. And it's my pleasure to be uh, work for the IGF for the last three years. And I must mention that uh, IGF and, and MAG is not a natural place for the technical community. And uh, the level of rich depth abstraction needed in the discussion, sometimes the technical community feel uncomfortable. But I must mention that uh, the technical community is doing a great job in planning for IGF, bringing problems, discussing the issues. And uh, along with that, we also produce some very good document in terms of BPF, like IPv6 BPF, IXP BPF, and also we are currently working on IoT, Big Data, and AI BPF. Saying that, that uh, as a part of the MAC, making, uh, designing the uh, plan for the IGF program, we need to do a lot of balance. Sometimes we do not find technical contents, technical proposals. Sometimes the discussion output are not really matching the technical reality, but there's always we need to do a compromise. And a good compromise with the other community and eventually, all the community find out a value out of the discussion. And uh, recently, we are uh, seeing more pressure and demand on the IGF for a tangible outcomes. You can recall the speech from the UN Secretary General and from the President of France. And uh, there's a real pressure on IGF to come up with some sort of solutions. But as a part of the technical community, I must mention that there are some practical issues we can solve technically, very quickly, but there are some issues that are not practical, and either we need to learn how to live with, with it, or we need to find other ways to solve this issue. And that requires more and more engagement with other community. And in IGF, we, as a technical community, what I see that we should bring the technical issue and we should place it to the other community member in a simpler and not, uh, lang language in an understandable manner so that we can uh, get to understand each other. On the other hand, we need to understand the views of the other communities. Some technical issues, the way we see after discussion the IGF, we find it more complete and sometimes more complicated, but we get better solution in the IGF. And uh, and, uh, and I wish that uh, we can apply more technical solution and we can find solution to all the IGFs, but I, did, I think we need to be more patient. And we need to understand each other, we need to gain trust and if we can really build the internet for trust, we can resolve many other problems easily. And uh, thank you very much once again. And I really enjoyed working with MAG in the IGF. And I wish a bright future for internet governance and future internet. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Simon. Mm -hmm. Our next speaker is Mr. Moez Chakchuk, 
Assistant Director General for Communications and Information of UNESCO. Votre Excellence, invité, cher ami, chers collègues, mesdames et messieurs, c'est un honneur pour moi de retrouver l'IGF et de participer à cette clôture de l'édition 2018 du Forum sur la gouvernance de l'Internet. J'ai raté les trois derniers, je participe à celle de la France, c'est un honneur pour moi. Les discussions des trois, de ces trois derniers jours nous ont permis d'aborder des questions essentielles liées à la gouvernance de l'Internet mais surtout de retrouver des réponses ensemble afin de garantir la paix et un Internet de confiance, thème de ce forum. Les échanges que nous avons eus nous ont montré que lorsque nous parlons et pensons à l'accès universel à l'Internet et à l'avenir de la gouvernance de l'Internet, nous devons aller bien au-delà des questions liées à la connectivité et à l'infrastructure. Nous devons adopter une approche globale, prenant en compte, bien sûr, la dimension humaine, et qui répondent aux défis en matière d'éducation, de compétences numériques et de diversité linguistique. De créativité, bien sûr, et de contenu disponible, tout en mettant en place des politiques favorables au développement et à l'essor de l'Internet. Pour l'UNESCO, le Forum de gouvernance Internet représente un événement majeur permettant d'assurer le suivi du Sommet mondial sur la société de l'information et d'étendre nos horizons quant à la gouvernance de l'Internet. Nous sommes alors très heureux de vous avoir accueilli à notre siège, centre d'échange d'informations et laboratoire d'idées, qui fait de la gouvernance de l'Internet une priorité dans notre agenda et nos actions. Par le biais de nos travaux sur la promotion de la diversité linguistique sur Internet, sur l'augmentation de son accessibilité, au profit des personnes handicapées, des populations autochtones, et de notre travail sur l'égalité des genres, l'UNESCO œuvre en, en effet à relever les défis d'un accès universel à l'Internet. Mais les travaux de l'UNESCO sur la gouvernance de l'Internet sont aussi étroitement liés à notre réflexion continue sur le rôle de l'intelligence artificielle dans la promotion des sociétés du savoir et de la bonne gouvernance. À cet égard, et dans la continuité directe du Forum de gouvernance Internet, l'UNESCO organise demain, en partenariat avec l'Internet Society et Mozilla Foundation, un débat ouvert sur l'intelligence artificielle. Il sera dédié à l'étude des implications technologiques, éthiques, politiques, sociales et juridiques du développement des applications de l'intelligence artificielle. Bien sûr, j'ai toujours le plaisir de vous inviter à participer à ces discussions, même en ligne, et qui s'annonce particulièrement enrichissant pour nous et pour toute la communauté. Mais, mesdames et messieurs, il reste encore beaucoup à faire pour créer un environnement en ligne où les droits de l'homme sont pleinement protégés et où l'Internet est véritablement accessible à tous. Les principes de l'universalité de l'Internet, prenant à l'Internet fondé sur les droits, droits humains, ouvert, accessible à tous et alimenté par la participation de multiples acteurs, doivent nous guider dans cette perspective. Ils doivent permettre que l'Internet continue de bénéficier à l'ensemble de nos sociétés et des individus qui les composent et permettent de maintenir la confiance entre les différents acteurs qui ont contribué et qui contribuent encore aujourd'hui à son développement à l'échelle universelle. Le Forum de gouvernance Internet l'a souligné. La gouvernance de l'Internet soulève encore de nombreuses questions. Nous devons garder ces questions à l'esprit, contenir nos dialogues inclusifs et poursuivre nos efforts collectifs visant à trouver des réponses durables aux défis de la gouvernance de l'Internet. Mesdames et Messieurs, je ne pourrai pas conclure mon intervention sans remercier l'ensemble des participants, et des intervenants et des organisateurs du Forum de gouvernance Internet. Je souhaite également exprimer ma gratitude à la France pour avoir accueilli le Forum de gouvernance Internet cette année. Et je remercie en particulier l'ambassadeur et cher ami David Martinan. Merci, David. Et bien sûr, son équipe, qui a travaillé acharnement pour le réaliser cet événement. Et notamment Delila Rahmouni, ainsi que Pierre Bonis, que j'étais ravi de le rencontrer et de connaître, et le coordinateur du comité d'organisation. 
Leur travail atteste de l'engagement continu du gouvernement français de veiller à ce que la gouvernance de l'Internet, les technologies de l'information et de la communication, et plus largement de la transformation numérique, restent au cœur, au cœur du programme de développement durable. Je tiens également à remercier Madame Lynne Saint-Amour, présidente du groupe consultatif multipartite et son équipe, ainsi que tous les autres contributeurs qui ont pu permettre et en mettre en place un processus inclusif, transparent et de préparation de ce fructueux forum. Enfin, je tiens à remercier toute l'équipe de l'UNESCO, particulièrement Judith et Sarah, et Sacha plutôt, ainsi que l'équipe KAMAI et tous les équipes qui ont travaillé au sein de l'UNESCO en partenariat avec le gouvernement français. Enfin, je tiens à remercier tous les participants qui ont cru à ce dialogue, qui ont vu qu'à un certain moment, on a vu un certain fléchissement de la communauté. Aujourd'hui, nous avons montré quand même qu'on a encore des choses à faire et que notre dialogue doit continuer. Donc la coopération réussie entre le gouvernement français et le groupe consultatif multipartite, le secrétariat du Forum et l'UNESCO est un symbole fort de ce qui peut être réalisé à l'échelle internationale quand nous ouvrons ensemble pour une meilleure gouvernance de l'Internet. Au nom de l'UNESCO, et au nom de Madame la Directrice Générale, Madame Azoulay, je tiens à réaffirmer notre attachement fort au Forum sur la gouvernance de l'Internet et vous remercie à tous pour votre contribution aux discussions de ces derniers jours. Je vous remercie bien pour votre attention. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Maurice. I would now like to call the IGF MAC chair, Ms. Lynn Santamol. I will work to keep my remarks quite short. Um, in addition to the thanks I mentioned at the beginning of this session, I'd like to add my very sincere thanks to the outgoing MAG for all their support and all their efforts over the past year. In addition to overseeing the program activities of the annual meeting, and all the intersessional activities, again, such as the best practice forums, dynamic coalitions, and the Connecting and Enabling the Next Billions major policy initiative, we actually have had um, considerable efforts put into a number of strategic and operational issues, largely through five MAG working groups, working group on IDGF improvements, a working group on multi-year strategic work plan, a working group on fundraising, a working group on comms and outreach, and finally a, work group on, uh, a working group on workshop evaluation and selection process. All those working groups are actually open to the community. They're led by the MAG, but they're open to the community. So this is actually where a lot of the comments we've actually heard today will go to be advanced within either MAG work directly or in any new working groups that the MAG should, should um, decide to move forward with. None of this would have been possible, though, without the exceptional support of the IGF Secretariat, which is a very lean, and we've heard two times, and many times, too lean, but exceptionally competent and dedicated secretariat. So I'd really like to thank Changatai, Eleanor, Anya, and Lewis. That's an indication of just how lean the secretariat is, and a few very dedicated um, consultants as well for all the work they actually support over the year. So I'd like to give both the MAG and this year as well we had strong support from staff in the Department of Economic and Social Affairs and for that we give our thanks we honestly couldn't have made the progress we made this year in many areas without the efforts and in particular Denise and Wyman are here in the in the audience with us still um, excitingly and I believe for the first time ever, it may not be true, but I think for the first time ever, we actually have a new MAG announced and ready to start work tomorrow. As most of you may not know, the current MAG and the current chair stand down at the end of every IGF. Um, so that's in the past has actually left um, quite a gap, nearly four months in the last few years. So this is such a, <laughs> such a big benefit uh, to, the, to the community and to the MAG for all the work we actually need to do. And for that, I'd really like to thank the Secretary General, the Secretary General's office, specifically ASG Fabrizio, who I know was um, very key in making this happen, and the DESA staff. Um, I would say it was none too early, given the 
uh, challenges and uh, opportunities we've actually heard here, both from the Secretary General himself, from President Macro, and certainly from all the aspirations in the, in the community. There is certainly no shortage of work to be done. So while it's clear we have a lot of work cut out for us, as a community, we're going to have to examine what's appropriate, obviously respecting our mandate, what's possible within the resources we can actually um, pull together, and as a community-led effort, then prioritize and look to the community to help us support and resource those efforts. There are many other challenges that we've kind of brought along from past years. We have still um, a, a, a strong desire to increase the participation of senior policymakers and governments. We heard reference to that a number of times here over the last week, and from the private sector as well. Um, and that gets to the heart, I think, of the benefit of the IGF, but also um, the places where so many of what we actually talk about here can, can duly be, be advanced. So we're going to need to think carefully about how we engage that across the community. Um, I would ask everybody to stay tuned. We will work to start the induction um, efforts for the new MAG next week. Not tomorrow. Many people will be on planes, but next week. There's not a lot of time to lose. And um, again, welcome the incoming MAG. The list is actually published on the um, IGF website. And um, luckily, we have about two-thirds of the MAG returning this year, so we have a strong core of, um, of uh, people who are already deeply engaged in the effort and look forward to a lot of new energy and enthusiasm for the new members. And I'd just like to, again, I mentioned at the top of the hour, but thank UNESCO um, for their support here. Um, for, um, as he said, Judith and Sasha in particular for a lot of the um, efforts to host us here. And then, of course, to Ambassador Martino, the organizing team, Pierre Bonis. Um, we really couldn't have done it without their efforts and, and all the, the volunteers. Mostly, though, we couldn't do it without the community. We couldn't do it without the community participating day in, day out in every one of the efforts, whether it's through a national, regional, and IGF youth initiative or through it's the working groups or the BPFs. It's critically important that you stay engaged. Let us know what's working, what's not working, and what you think. Um, I want to thank everybody for their efforts, their passion, their commitment, and look forward to a very exciting 2019. Thank you. Thank you very much, Len. Our next speaker is Ambassador David Martino, the co-chair uh, from the host country. Please, you have the floor. Merci, Chengitai. Um, donc, au fond, c'est mon dernier discours en tant qu'ambassadeur qu pour le numérique, puisque demain, je remets les clés de mon bureau à euh, mon ami Henri Verdier, qui a eu l'imprudence d'accepter le poste. Henri, bonne chance à toi et merci pour ton travail pendant l'IGF. Donc, je n'ai pas préparé grand-chose et, et du coup, comme le ministre a déjà parlé, je vais me permettre de parler de manière assez personnelle. Euh, mon premier IGF, c'était il y a cinq ans, en 2013, en Indonésie. Entre nous, c'était à Bali, mais pour ma femme, il valait mieux que je dise que c'était en, en Indonésie. Euh, par ailleurs, euh, c'était quelques semaines après que Moëz, qui était alors encore un cyberdissident tunisien, nous invite au Forum de Tunis. Une semaine après les révélations Snowden, donc vous pouvez imaginer la pression qui fut euh, la nôtre euh, sur, euh, de la part de la société civile, nous les représentants des États. Cinq ans après, en février dernier, à Ottawa, Lynn m'a approché pour me dire que ce serait vraiment une bonne idée si la France acceptait d'être le pays hôte en 2018. Et je suis revenu à Paris et j'ai fait cette proposition-là parce que, au fond, l'IGF est une institution qui est déjà pérenne, puisque c'est sa 13e édition que c'est une institution du système des Nations Unies, que la France est très attachée au système des Nations Unies, que la France considère que le système des Nations Unies peut être euh, un lieu où l'on parle de gouvernance de l'Internet, euh, et que l'IGF, au fond, a une, caractère, une caractéristique très particulière, c'est qu'elle est 
c'est qu'il a euh, ce caractère d'universalité qu'on ne retrouve pas forcément ailleurs. Donc, euh, j'ai fait cette proposition qui a été euh, retenue et nous sommes partis dans la préparation de cette, de cette édition 2018 avec Pierre, avec Dalila, avec Lynn, avec le secrétariat euh, pour que, au final, nous nous retrouvions ici à Paris pendant trois jours. Ce que je voudrais dire avant de partir, c'est que vous ne pouvez pas douter de mon engagement pour l'IGF. Nous avons besoin de l'IGF, mais nous avons besoin que l'IGF prenne encore plus d'ampleur, encore plus de responsabilité. Et pour cela, oui, il va être nécessaire que l'IGF évolue, poursuive son évolution. C'est d'ailleurs ce que son mandat lui recommande de faire. Le mandat de l'IGF, donné euh, en, lors du sommet mondial sur la société de l'information, renouvelé en, en, en décembre 2016-15 à New York, l'invite à préparer des recommandations sur un certain nombre de sujets. L'IGF est très fort pour identifier les sujets nouveaux du numérique. L'IGF a compris, cette communauté a compris avant euh, le reste du monde quels, a, quels allaient être les grands sujets dont il fallait débattre. Certains sujets ont d'ailleurs depuis même disparu. D'autres vont réapparaître à nouveau. Ce qui est sûr, c'est que, comme l'a dit le président de la République il y a deux jours, les États vont devoir préparer des régulations. L'objectif est que ces régulations soient les plus intelligentes possibles, les plus appropriées possibles, pour éviter les excès qu'a pu décrire le ministre tout à l'heure, et pour, au fond, que ces régulations soient à jour, tiennent compte des évolutions du monde numérique. Et ces évolutions, au fond, c'est vous qui en êtes les maîtres. C'est vous, la communauté technique, les utilisateurs, les entrepreneurs. Et, et donc, pour éviter qu'il y ait un décalage, il est très important que cette communauté s'exprime et qu'elle donne son avis. Mais pour qu'elle donne son avis de manière utilisable, il faut que ces avis soient écrits et soient transmissibles. Encore une fois, ne vous trompez pas, la France a dit depuis le premier jour, depuis le sommet mondial sur la société de l'information, son attachement et son soutien au système multi-acteur, au multi-stakeholder model. Nous pensons qu'il est temps que cette communauté invente la grammaire de ce modèle de façon à pouvoir le faire fonctionner de manière pleinement efficace. Euh, si vous voulez, si nous voulons que ces recommandations, que vos avis, que vos opinions soient prises en compte, il est important de réagir ou de réfléchir au processus de production, d'élaboration de ces contenus. Il est important que vous inventiez cette grammaire du modèle multi-acteur. Comment organiser la meilleure représentation de tous les acteurs Comment organiser des consultations qui soient les plus claires, les plus transparentes, les plus efficaces possibles Comment faire en sorte que ces écrits, ces avis, soient communicables facilement, qu'ils soient connus de chacun, que chaque decision maker, dont certains ont pu regretter qu'il n'y en avait pas assez à l'IGF, puisse s'en saisir et puisse les utiliser je fais cette dernière recommandation avant de partir à vous, cette communauté. Saisissez-vous de ces sujets-là. Allez au-delà euh, des éditions précédentes. Euh, continuons à bâtir sur ce qu'ont fait nos amis suisses l'année dernière avec les, les Geneva Messages. Prenez le pouvoir, inventez vos propres règles. Aujourd'hui, le modèle multi-acteur, multi c'est une idée qui mérite encore d'être dévolué et qui mérite encore de prendre véritablement corps et de prospérer. Voilà. Euh, C'est la raison pour laquelle nous, nous sommes tellement attachés à cette, cette, ce modèle que nous avons euh, euh, négocié avec d'autres, et en particulier des acteurs privés, le Paris Call, dont le président de la République a parlé. Parce que nous pensons, nous en sommes convaincus, que, notamment sur les sujets de cybersécurité et de stabilité du cyberespace, la seule discussion entre États n'est plus suffisante. 
Nous devons atteindre un certain nombre d'objectifs. Nous devons bannir certaines pratiques. La seule manière pour y arriver aujourd'hui, dans l'état où est euh, le, le dialogue multilatéral, c'est aussi d'engager un dialogue avec les acteurs privés. Et c'est de faire en sorte que nous co-construisions ces normes. Et, et c'est la preuve qu'il qu y a une attente, c'est que ce Paris Call est aujourd'hui, deux jours après avoir été lancé, c'est déjà un très grand succès. Plus de 54 États y ont souscrit. Plus de 200 entreprises y ont souscrit. Plus de 100 organisations et de la société civile y ont souscrit. J'ai rarement vu un tel démarrage pour une initiative multi-acteur. Je vous engage à l'endosser, l'analyser, et j'engage l'IGF à faire en sorte de continuer le travail sur ce Paris Call. Le Paris Call, c'est un appel à trouver les idées et à engager les mesures de coopération qui vont nous permettre de mieux lutter, par exemple, contre le reverse hacking, par exemple, contre la prolifération des armes cyber, par exemple, contre la prolifération des fake news au moment des opérations démocratiques. C'est un appel. Saisissez-vous-en. Euh, J'ai entendu également, dans les, au moment de, du, du débat avec la communauté, qu'il euh, y avait une attente de plus de présence des États et de plus de présence des entreprises au sein de l'IGF. Je suis convaincu que c'est une orientation absolument nécessaire. Euh, et pour ça, des mesures concrètes, pragmatiques, peuvent être suffisantes. Et nous en parlerons avec vous, Fabrizio, après, si vous le voulez bien. Mais il faut que chacun trouve sa place. Je vous y engage. Voilà, je vais m'arrêter là. J'espère que vous êtes convaincu de mon engagement auprès de l'institution qui nous réunit aujourd'hui. Je voudrais encore une fois remercier tous ceux qui y ont participé et qui ont travaillé. Et je voudrais vous dire que voilà, je suis tellement attaché que ma prochaine mission dans mon prochain poste, c'est de faire en sorte de convaincre la société civile afghane, si courageuse, dont certains sont venus jusqu'ici à Paris pour participer à l'IGF, la société civile afghane, d'organiser et d'accueillir le prochain IGF, de façon que nous nous retrouvions tous à Kaboul dans quelques temps. Thank you very much, Ambassador. And Afghanistan does have a very strong and vibrant national IGF. Um, I would like to call for our, a speaker from our next host country, who is uh, Dr. Daniela Brunstrup, Deputy Director General from the Ministry of the Economy from Germany. Thank you. Chair, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, this was an outstanding IGF with so many attendees from all over the world, from the different stakeholder groups, and with a very interesting, excellent, balanced program. Thanks to France, thanks to the United Nations, and thanks to the MAG for organizing this IGF in such a few months. This was great. This deserves praise and recognition. Congratulations. You set the bar very high for us next year in Germany. You all know already the next IGF will take place next November in Berlin. And what has been achieved here is an incentive now for us to reach the same level and also to meet your expectations that you shared with us in the stock taking session right now. We promise we'll take our example from France and from Switzerland and we'll let ourselves and our preparations being inspired from you by the dedication and the commitment and the ideas of the IJF community. We are looking very much forward to working with all of you because This is what IGF is all about. It's a multi-stakeholder forum. You and us and those out there who are not yet part of our community, we are all together what the IGF is. It's a, we are the multi-stakeholders fighting for an open, secure, reliable and truly global internet, free from censorship, discrimination and propaganda. 
we will do our best next year to get all key stakeholders from all regions of the world to Berlin, especially also from the global south. Ladies and gentlemen, Germany is honored to host the IGF 2019. We applied because we deeply believe in the IGF and the multi-stakeholder approach. For us, the IGF is the most important international dialogue platform on the future of the internet. And I'm very happy and honored representing the German government today to kindly invite all of you to Berlin in 2019. Berlin is a very good place to host the IGF. Those of you who have been there already will know that, and all the others, I'm sure, will see next year. Berlin is an open and vibrant city, with people from everywhere in the world, with coming with different perspectives, different experiences and knowledges. The city has a very strong startup community and an ever-growing creative, creative scene. Every day, Berlin is attracting new talents, new ideas, new investments, and we believe Berlin is and remains a place for visions. And in November 2019, it's you and us, the IGF multi-stakeholder community who will use and should use the spirit of the city to give birth to new ideas on how to tackle the most pressing issues on the internet. See you all next year in Berlin. Our website is right now going online as well as our Twitter account. So please visit www.igf2019.berlin. And now, please enjoy the world release of our IGF 2019 movie. That should start now. If a president of a country has to call the owner of the internet, who should he or she call? There's nobody. But it doesn't mean that there are no rules. We have a social problem that is associated with the use of these media, and we have to educate people. Offline human rights and fundamental rights should be the same in the online world. We need to remember that technology should not take away our humanity. 20 years ago, the internet was more or less a technical issue with some political implications, but today it's a political issue with a technical component. Artificial intelligence is a super powerful technology. Virtual reality, big data, criminal activities on the internet, all of those are incredibly important. I do feel that we are an adaptive society. The Internet Governance Forum will help sustain the internet and make it stronger. Everyone who has a stake in a topic that's being under discussion can have an equal opportunity. Let's keep working together to transform the internet and get it a safe and democratic space. Digitalisierung kann nur mit Vertrauen gelingen. Wir danken den französischen Gastgebern und wir freuen uns darauf, die Diskussion in Berlin fortzusetzen. Berlin is really a vibrant place, specifically the tech community and the digital community. In Deutschland arbeiten viele engagierte Menschen daran mit, das Internet der Zukunft zu gestalten. Die vor uns liegenden Aufgaben verlangen internationale Zusammenarbeit und gegenseitiges Vertrauen. Lassen Sie uns gemeinsam nach Lösungen suchen. Ich freue mich auf Ihren Besuch und lade Sie herzlich zum Internet Governance Forum 2019 nach Berlin ein. So, welcome to Berlin. Many thanks. Thank you very much, Ms. Brunstrup. Our final speaker representing the United Nations Secretary General is Mr. Fabricio Hochschild, Assistant Secretary General for Strategic Coordination in the Executive Office of the Secretary General.
So, excellent, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues and friends joining us online from around the world. We're in the last minutes of this intensive and impressive learning and policy journey, which unfolded over the past 48 hours under the central theme of the Internet of Trust. And I must thank you, especially those of you still in the room, for your incredible patience. I wish I could say it will be uh, rewarded by patisserie and drinks afterwards, but uh, I'm afraid resources are lacking. And I'll come back to resources. Um, at the outset, I, I have to thank President Macron for setting us out on this journey with a unique, visionary, and very stimulating introduction. I have to thank France not only for their initiative and intellectual inspiration provided not just by uh, President Macron's speech, but also by the Paris call, but also for their incredible generosity as hosts. We were honored not only by, the President, by President Macron, but also by His Excellency the Foreign Minister, Jean-Yves Le Drian, by Minister Madrubi, by uh, an old friend to, to, to many of us, uh, David Martinot, whom we wish very well in Kabul, and hopefully we will be able to join him there at some point. And uh, I'd like to welcome the new uh, ambassador, Henri Verdier. Um, and I'd like to thank the very dedicated team that worked with them. Of course, I'd also like to thank my colleagues and friends at UNESCO, and in particular, the Director General, Madame Azoulay, who also provided stimulating remarks at the beginning of the session, as well as offering us her facilities and support throughout. But above all, I think those who deserve the most thanks are, of course, you, the participants. Uh, there were over 2,000 on site and many more online in 140 countries, representing all stakeholders. 43% of the participants here in Paris were women. Uh, let's hope we can do better in Germany, uh, frankly. Uh, you know, this is uh, 2018, we should have gender parity, and that is, of course, one of the recurring criticisms of the tech uh, community, is that lack of parity, and I must confess that I'm part of it. Uh, uh, you know, if we look at the podium, um, I'm the wrong gender. Um, collectively, you all represent the IGF's multi-stakeholder model. And I would like to caution something that came up in the comments that sort of opposed multilateralism with multi-stakeholder. I mean, multilateralism increasingly is multi-stakeholder in its approach. And I think there are some wonderful examples of that, including the Paris Climate Agreement, which was very much part of a uh, multi-stakeholder uh, approach, or the 2030 Agenda, which was also a multi-stakeholder and multilateral uh, endeavor. But you are the core of this approach, and we, a big thanks to you. We salute you, we bow to you, we admire you. Um, the statistics I quoted on the number of participants are quite impressive, but what matters even more is the dynamics, the full rooms, the buzz in the corridors, and I regret that one room was too full, as one of the uh, commentators said. From those rich discussion, I picked up uh, on three key issues. I also picked up a cold, as you can tell. Um, one was on trust, the other was on data, and a third was on ethics. Trust is in the title of this IGF, a global deficit of trust between countries and within countries, as well as towards multilateral organization, is a theme frequently elaborated on by the UN Secretary General. And I think a theme of distrust towards government was also a theme of many of those who took the floor before, as well as distrust towards the UN. Over the last three days, you managed to dive deep into these questions of digital trust. You moved from an abstract notion to identifying ways and means how to improve trust. Trust increases with more awareness of how technology functions. Trust improves with transparency. Trust depends on accountability of industry, governments, and also of us individual users. 
Trust is also about ethics, as the sessions on artificial intelligence very clearly identified. Society, including a digital one, cannot function without a basis of trust. I would like to encourage both you and our UN panel uh, on digital cooperation to look further into concrete ways of uh, securing increased trust. The critical relevance of data was also reflected in the discussions today. Societies worldwide, and I think Ambassador Martinon alluded to this, are in search of the right policy balance around data. How do we ensure that data fuels innovation and economic dynamism while adequately protecting the public and individual interests? How do we ensure that data is not abused, whether for commercial interests or for the violation of human rights? As was indicated, and there were some very moving examples from the MENA region of where data had been abused precisely uh, for that end. Uh, as was indicated in the few sessions that I attended, data is a cross-cutting and an interdisciplinary issue par excellence. Data is a technological and standardization issue, but data also matters for the security of modern society and for human rights. Data is behind privacy. Data is about, also about trade. All of us in multilateral and multi-stakeholder communities will have to deal with the challenge how to address data in a more comprehensive, more sophisticated way. In addition to trust and data, many sessions focused on ethics and AI. Ethics is probably the most important aspect of the encounter of technology and humanity. Many discussions at this IGF addressed ethics by design. Can we program machines to be ethical? If yes, what should the rules and principles be? Many issues remain open, but there's a clear need for guidelines in relation to autonomous weapons. The Secretary General, as you know, has called for a ban on lethal autonomous weapons. But we also need guidelines for driverless cars or for the thousands of apps powered by AI, for face recognition software, and for so on. Perhaps for some of the future IGFs, we will need more philosophers in the room to help us with these questions. And I would like to reiterate the call that Lynn also echoed from the Secretary General that the IGF should not only be multi-stakeholder, but also multidisciplinary, uh, a multidisciplinary forum. We cannot operate in silos if we're to do justice to the formidable challenges that new technologies, including in the internet, are producing. The Internet's Governance Forum is in transition, like many of our institutions, that adjust to digital developments. Both the Secretary General and President Macron placed high expectations on the IGF. As was indicated in the opening statements, change is needed precisely to safeguard the public core to ensure of the internet, to ensure it's free and open with diverse content, but also safe and trustworthy. We have to safeguard that the internet, as one speaker put it, I think on the very first day, produces magic in terms of its connections, but white magic, not some of the black magic that we see now, and that it serves really, truly to connect humanity, not to divide humanity, to further good rather than foment evil. The multiple efforts to strengthen the IGF have to, en have to enable it to rise, to contribute to the challenge of finding the wisest way to do these. And I would say I found in some of the statements the postulation of a false dichotomy between freedom and liberty on the one hand and regulation on the other. I think that's a false dichotomy. The absence of the rule of law is not freedom. The absence of the rule of law is the rule of the mightiest, is the rule of tyranny, whether by private companies, and no disrespect, or by autocratic leaders. And there I'd like to 
quote, uh, since we're in Paris, uh, a very distinguished, one of many very distinguished French thinkers, Jean-Baptiste Henri Dominic uh, Lacordiere, who was a political activist and priest in a time of great upheaval in Europe, 1848, which was also in the midst of an industrial revolution and societal disquiet. And that he said the following, between the rich and the poor, the weak and the strong, the master and the servant, it is liberty which restricts and rule of law which sets us free. The rule of law obviously understood as rule of intelligent rule of law and in conformity with international standards is essentially a liberating element. The absence of it is what allows for abuse. Many such abuses were mentioned by some of our participants from Azerbaijan, from Egypt. So I think we have to listen carefully to the idea that if we want to safeguard the key, what we appreciate so much about the internet, it's probably better done through some form. I'm not, uh, it's not for me to say in what form, but some form of uh, uh, policy frameworks that uh, maintain it from abuse. The IGF will have to play an important role in strengthening digital cooperation mechanisms, which are currently being considered by the UN SG's high-level panel. And the interaction which started here between the Secretary General's high-level panel and the IGF is very important. I invite all of you to contribute to the panel's discussions, in particular with proposals that should link the IGF strengths and the need for more efficient digital cooperation mechanisms. There's a lot of need and space for innovative and effective solutions. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, there were more than 170 sessions held this past week, ranging from main sessions, open forums, workshops, to lightning sessions, and also other informal gatherings and side events. And we have to really recognize and applaud the outstanding preparatory work done by every member of the 2018 multi-stakeholder advisory group, the so-called MAG, under the guidance of the very able and distinguished guidance of Ms. Lynn St. Amour, who I think brings credit to the name of the wine rather than the other way around. Um, we also must thank all the UN staff uh, for the conference services, security, news coverage, communication outreach, remote participation, and technical infrastructure. The national, regional, and youth IGF initiatives should also be recognized as they are further expanding the importance and inclusive multi-stakeholder internet dialogue to new countries and regions. We now have more than 110 national and regional initiatives around the world, and around 50 of them were present with us this week to highlight their achievements. And a big thanks goes to all national and regional initiatives, including those who could not join us in person. Leading up to the 14th uh, Internet Governance Forum next year, innovations in programming and intersessional activities will continue to be implemented in a bottom-up manner based on feedback from the multi-stakeholder community and in line with our new mandate, which calls for greater participation from stakeholders from developing countries and improved working uh, modalities uh, with a greater focus on outcomes. Finally, and this is, this is a key point, we, we also wish to thank, to, I'd like to take this opportunity to really thank the many donors for their financial contributions to the United Nations IGF Trust Fund. And, and I really applaud the, 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 the UK for, for standing up and saying they'll pledge more. And I, I have to say, I was very impressed by the list of donors and the fact that so many private sector donors uh, are, are on that list. I think it's uh, truly exemplary in, in the contributions themselves, the mixture we have of governments uh, and the, the, the um, private sector. But let's be frank, we need to do more. I, I was trying to think of an analogy, and this probably isn't a very good one, but uh, we have some resources, but the IGF is essentially a volunteer body. I mean, the MAG are not paid. They do all the organization. The UN staff involved do it after hours. There are no UN staff exclusively dedicated to this. Um, and 
you know, if we want the IGF to run like a Ferrari in terms of meeting some of the challenges set out, there has to be fuel in the tank. And at the moment, uh, I, I, I think the fuel probably also keeps it at a relatively low speed so that it can go the distance. But I think it will need a big injection of resources if it's uh, realistically to, to learn to, to, to live up to some of the challenges that have so appropriately been set for it in helping coming to terms with some of the challenges. And I, I have to say, as a newcomer to this, I'm, it's my second IGF, I think given the resource constraints, it's absolutely incredible what you've achieved uh, thus far and what you've, um, the network you've created uh, across the globe. But I share the belief that we need to go to the next level, but I think we will not succeed with that without a major injection, uh, not just of ideas, but the sort of resources uh, to put those ideas into uh, action. Um, and I have to say, I thank Germany uh, for taking on the challenge uh, next year, for helping uh, to um, make sure uh, we, we do better in terms of uh, representation. Um, I think it's very exciting that we'll be in Germany. I also share the view that hopefully we will be able to rotate better around uh, the continents. Um, so I wish you now, after that rather lengthy concluding address, a very safe trip home. Uh, much in, hopefully you'll carry with you much inspiration uh, from these, these days and much well-being after being in, in this incredible uh, city with such gracious uh, hosts. And I wish you safety uh, online and offline and all the very best. Thank you. Thank you very much, Assistant Secretary General. Uh, I'd just like to close with reminding you all that there's a reception upstairs um, by our next host. And also, I would also, I think I didn't um, hear the scribes being thanked, so I'd like to thank the scribes for the very hard work, uh, making it very clear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And thank you all for sticking it out until the very end. Very much appreciated. See you during the intersessionals or next year in Berlin. Thank you. Mm.